<laughs> oh, welcome to Spoibob Bunge. <laughs> it's Spunk Club, boy. It's Bee Bob Boo Bop. <laughs> Not <laughs> Bee Boo Boo Beep. Boo Boo Bop! Oh, uh, hell no, the SpongeBob boys took 40 better I love that in any other show, we'd be like, guys, we need to re record that intro. <laughs> but for this, <laughs> but for this, it's like, that's appropriate. <laughs> Not for by this popular one, demand, Not for this by one. popular demand and in proof that bullying and peer pressure works. You asked for it. Charlie's here of the non-player cactus <laughs> chat. Welcome, Charlie. You asked for it and you got it. Are you ready? No. Listen, boys, before we begin, I just want to preface this episode by saying that I know that comparatively 25 years isn't really that long of an amount of time, but in that time... I have seen some weird shit, okay? <laughs> I've sat through that one amazing movie, okay? I've seen Tao. <laughs> I've watched Chappie multiple times. Henry Galley forced me to watch the pilot for Has Been Hotel. I have witnessed <laughs> an entire nation fawn over a family that robs them blind through exorbitant taxes during a cost of living crisis. <gasps> I've been to South End, and none of that, I mean none of that, could have prepared me for the strange, bizarre, and quite horrible experience that that is watching late season SpongeBob. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh. Can, can I can I share a quick anecdote before we jump into Charlie's first oh, episode? <laughs> There's been a running thing in like mine and Meg's life of like SpongeBob like infiltrating in uncomfortable ways. Like there's the uh, the now kind of infamous. For people who have seen the previous episodes, uh, like Squidward um, car puke incident. And we we had another oh incident the other day where we were driving um, driving uh, near this town called DY in Australia, in Sydney. And uh, there was this big, like, but a sign for a big music concert mm. at a, a venue called The Barracks in Manly. <laughs> Can you guess? What the top build band on this thing were? One guess each, Charlie. You I first. Feel like I'm underprepared to guess for this. Um, can, I, 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 got I, got I got it. I got it. I got a guess. I got a guess. Is it Ween? No, it was a band called Hoodoo Gurus. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well known oh, for oh, Voodoo no. Guru, the Voodoo Villain, that iconic, oh, no. racially they insensitive Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy villain. They can't, they can't get away with it. They'll swing for they this. Keep getting away with it. They'll swing for Henry, this. This is this is recompense for. I'm going to tell another personal anecdote. Please do. Here. It's very, it's a lot vaguer, but this is recompense, Henry, for when we live together. Uh, for new listeners or people who are previously unaware henry and i went to uni together we, and we were uh, housemates during our third year and almost every like day-to-day -day situation no matter how innocuous no matter how mundane and part of everyday life it was henry would always find a specific scene or a specific spongebob episode to relate it to <laughs> it's true <laughs> <laughs> without just <laughs> unprompted just every time <laughs> But the thing is, Charlie, that is because I, like, have been a fan of, like, the good Spongebob for basically my whole life. And it's why it's so, like, nightmarish and surreal to see what the show has become. Like, it would be really funny mm -hmm. if whoever, like, obviously, horribly, uh, Steven Hilleberg was uh, taken from us too soon. Um, but yeah. I just love the idea of, like, whoever is at the, like current showrunner of spongebob commenting on this video with um maybe you should just admit that you don't like the show anymore and fuck off <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe you should do that that would be a ridiculous thing for someone in like the position of power as like the spongebob showrunner to say like i can't imagine that <laughs> someone who had like that much money that much connections would say that I was going to say as well, just like, there's severe whiplash for me, like, coming at these as well, because, like, I do have, like, some vague memories of a few, like, a handful of specific Spongebob episodes. I didn't watch it as religiously as, as Henry, able <laughs> to, like, quote them on the daily, but, like, <laughs> it's part of your religion. 
but uh, but you know, I remember like you know the one where SpongeBob and Patrick get like a speck of paint on Mr. Krabs' first dollar. <laughs> yes. And then, like the one where Squidward like basically gaslights the pair of them into like being at war with each other, but they both then want to be best friends with Squidward, and he. Oh yeah, to naughty nautical both. neighbors. A I've classic. seen the movie multiple times. Yeah. Yeah, that that, that one. Yeah. Um, Charlie is not without their SpongeBob bona fides coming into this going into this yeah, podcast. Exactly. Those are my qualifications. If anyone was was wondering. <laughs> but in true SpongeBob boys fashion, the Please. least ready must first perform the oh, SpongeBob boy, boy ritual. Oh, SpongeBob boys. What was your first episode, Charlie? So my first episode was ironically titled "Welcome to Binary Bottom," and I say ironic because I'm a non-binary bottom. <laughs> Oh my god, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, seriously, like, I felt slightly victimized by Nickelodeon. Yeah. <laughs> that was a layup! How did, how did, <laughs> that was a, I, this system's rigged. The, the number generator was, I was rigged. I was gonna say, like, I feel personally victimized by Nickelodeon for that one. And I mean, like, during Pride Month as well, like, come Sickening. on. No, I, I kid. <laughs> the corruption in the SpongeBob Boys number generator is running rampant. Yeah, I mean, I, I kid, of course. Like, I know it's, it's meant to refer to binary, obviously, as the computing terminology, um, because it's the, the premise of the episode is it's set in an alternate universe where everyone's a robot. Um, which is also even more ironic that I got this one. Because... <laughs> How is this your episode? I made it a laugh for you, Charlie. <laughs> It makes it even more fucking ironic because what is going on? I, um, earlier this year, I'm really into cyberpunk, and earlier this year, I had a robotic arm tatooed on my left forearm. So yeah, corruption is running rampant in the. Number, all we the need is like Doctor Who to turn up in the episode now, and it will be the most. No, but that happened. What, Henry? No, fuck you, Henry. Fuck you. What the Henry? I'm not even kidding. Oh my god. Wait, so to hear so Charlie comes on to SpongeBob Boys and systematically makes sure that Henry and I progressively get unready so that they can be the one true SpongeBob boy. Okay, tell us more. I have to know. I'm I'm frightened and fascinated. Overarching context. This episode is part of a a rather, where they're usually like two furs and you get two episodes that are both about 10 minutes. This one is a three fur. The first episode being ten minutes, the second being seven, and the final <laughs> being three. Why would they do it like that? <laughs> well, well, this is why. Because what ties all three together is, it's a parody of, of all things, the Twilight Zone. What? But they call it, wait to sigh, the Tidal Zone. Oh my god. <laughs> Which is oh. not funny, even though I giggled a little bit. <laughs> Um, I swear it's the vodka. Who is this for, though? You know, like it. It's, I, I it's... don't exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. It reminded me of the last episode of this you guys did, where you were. Um, the, J- J.K. Simmons yeah. appeared, and it's like ki- it was to do a Whiplash parody, and it's like no kid that's watching SpongeBob ever like has seen has seen Whiplash. No, it's <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it it's just such a. Str- but the whole th- the presenter of it is just. A guy with the old timey diver helmet on, doing a um, Rod Serling impression, uh, I assume. No, he's yeah, just, he's just doing the like the French narrator oh. accent. Um, huh. So he didn't even they didn't even bother with that. I don't know if that's lazy or like novel because they're putting their yeah. own spin on it. Yeah. It's novel. It's 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 novel. <laughs> it's novel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll melt you at contact. So he introduces us to the concept. He's just like, hey. You know, you know, Bikini Bottom. What if everyone was a robot? <laughs> well, here you go. Uh, <laughs> words to that effect. <laughs> I think the writer was hung over when they wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> fuck just it, like, they're robots now. Yeah, literally, just <laughs> beep, fuck boo, it. Boo boo boop. <laughs> boo boo beep. But that's the plot of the whole episode, really. So we open on a robotic version of SpongeBob, <laughs> who's called SpongeBob. Of course. You'll find that the the quote unquote creativity with like the alternate names. Is Squidward called like Squidbot and Patrick called like Botrick or something? Botrick would be better. You're right about the Squidward one. <laughs> of course. Like you would expect, the interior of his house is all metallic. It's all been, you know, repainted to look, you know, a bit more futuristic. He wakes up and gets reassembled. He gets his eyes and all his facial features put on. He he looks at himself in the mirror at one point and says, Oh, you look so handsome, SpongeBot. And then his reflection kisses him, which 
has nothing to do with him being a robot. It's it's just a weird thing that happens. They just needed to kill time. Exactly. I mean, like, there's the there's the, the stuff you would expect. Like, you know, he eats nuts and bolts for breakfast. And, you know, he eats that. nuts. He, he nuts and bolts. <laughs> um, <laughs> just like me. Uh, but, like, one of the things I noticed, because uh, Spongebot is just, like, a solid colour. He's, like, a weird, like, beige. He's not yellow. Oh. Um, but he does. He doesn't have any of like the texturing that like normal SpongeBob has, and just he's just flat. No, honestly, a quick aside on that. Like something I've noticed about just new SpongeBob in general is the um the colors, and I think SpongeBob's yellow um in some episodes is a particular victim of this. All the colors are so saturated, and it kind of makes them a little bit eye searing. It all just looks kind of. Kind of like phoned in and rushed and. SpongeBob is like The Simpsons in the sense that, like, kind of the brighter the colors are, the worse the show is. Yeah, it's like it's like radiating <laughs> some kind of deep sea emission that like is slowly like corroding like the viewer's experience. <laughs> you open the vents, kid. You're dead. Uh, so he makes Gary, who is of course a, a little uh, snail robot on treads, who is called Gary Bot. Creativity is dead. <laughs> He makes him chase a laser, which comes from SpongeBot's nose. Which he then he then catches the laser dot and eats it. <laughs> Great, That's I love funny. it. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just like it was like uh, okay. But then it's it's you know SpongeBob's got to go to work. So while but while he's putting his hat on, which his hat is also a robot, um, and he has to direct it to get to like the center of his head. Gary sneaks inside a compartment in SpongeBob's back. On the way to work, he passes Squidward, or as he's very creatively named in this in this alternate universe, uh, Squidbot. So he's building a replica of himself, like a one to one copy. The moment SpongeBob comes past and is like, "Hey, we gotta we gotta go to work, Squid Squidbot," uh, his his replica clone immediately self destructs yeah. <laughs> after learning that it'll be living next door to SpongeBot. <laughs> oh no! Which, admittedly, was actually I actually found was kind of funny. He literally is like, I gotta live next door to that, and then punches a self-destruct button and dies. Just take my word picture. Are they doing like roboty voices, or are they doing like normal voices? No. Well, that's good because the robot. No, if they were, the if they were voices. all talking like this, it would have probably been even more obnoxious. I can't imagine having a robot voice be your one gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just hypothetically. Because hate is the second strongest emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Replace the batteries in your robots, kids. Yeah, anyway, exactly. Charlie, what's <laughs> that? So we, we pass uh, Patron, as he's called in this one. Um, his rock is just a hologram. <laughs> is Patron going to get kicked off of Game Grumps for some, like, you know, racy comments? <laughs> some nefarious yeah. shit? Uh, no. Uh, he's barely in this episode. He has one scene and then that that's it. That, that's it. <laughs> then Spongebob goes to work for Crabborg, the head of the Arasaka Corporation. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just picturing Larry the Wake Lobster. Wake the fuck up, Squidbot. We've got a city to burn. <laughs> I'm just thinking Larry the Lobster because he's like the big one he's just like fucking adam smasher with like all of the like black metal <laughs> you look like a cut of fuckable meat <laughs> you look like a cut of fuckable meat spongebob when big adam came around just to smash him down <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh the crusty crab in this version is the the uh the crabby battery <laughs> so, they could have gone with the rusty crab these fucking idiots and also and also why wouldn't they call what they serve the crabby battery it makes sense that they need the batteries. They do. It's both. <laughs> okay. I might be misremembering it, but I'm pretty sure it's both. Fun. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Like, it is actually, like, a giant battery, though. <laughs> like, it's a... Uh... <laughs> Imagine if you went to a McDonald's that was just a giant burger. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go inside. No, but I what love is... that. <laughs> Henry, you're telling me you don't want to live in a world <laughs> no, that's like that? that's so true, you're right. <laughs> that just strikes me as, like, one of those, like, horrific, like, AI fast food commercials where it's like, <laughs> go to burger, get burger, become burger. <laughs> Open the door, Here burger. The burger eats you. This is where it starts to um, deteriorate pretty rapidly. <laughs> Much like an AI art fast food commercial. <laughs> yeah, this is a perfect segue. <laughs> through, like, sticking his head through the, the serving hatch... Uh, and Gary emerging at the right time. Um, Squidbot and Gary become 
fused. <laughs> what? They they fusion? fall into uh, I... the fryer, which is which is not f- which is not filled with like cooking oil. It's filled with motor oil <laughs> because of course it is. Um, and they become fused for some reason. This sticks them together. And the the rest of the entire rest of the episode is Gary racing around on on his little treads with Squidbot stuck upside down uh, via his head on uh, Gary's shell. I always knew Squidward would go out through cyber psychosis. Yeah. <laughs> 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 then it like Squidward's like big eyes like flashing as he's just like trying to gun down SpongeBob and Mr. Crab. <laughs> Honestly, that would have made that for me. For context, listeners, I'm a, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big cyberpunk fan. Visual references of how big a cyberpunk fan you are may be on the screen right now. <laughs> but I did a cosplay of David Martinez very recently at MCM London Comic Con. Holy shit, Patrick! Squidward's chrome is making him cyber psycho. We gotta stop him, Choom. <laughs> I'm just picturing uh, Sandy would be Rebecca. In this, no, don't don't do my girl Rebecca like that. And then that, Plankton, honestly. Plankton will don't. be the Ripper Doc, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny you should mention him because he's who. Shows oh up no! Next. Wait a second! Wait! I just realized. Oh fuck! I'm dreading it right now. Uh, what is Karen? You you no, oh! no don't say it don't say it because you're there. You're right there, no, bud. You're no. right there. They do it. No, no, they do it. No, they no, no, do it. no. Because Gary and Squidbot crash. Into not the chum bucket, the grease bucket. Which sure, not okay, a fun, not a play whatever. On, not a play on any of the names. Sure, fine. Where we meet Plankbot. Why didn't they call him fucking Planktron? Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? He's a little wind-up robot who who walks really fast. Um, and his wife Karen is his flesh and blood wife, and she's she's a fish. Oh, so, so sweet. they've swapped. Oh no, weird. So they've swapped, and then and then Max Tack arrives, and SpongeBob activates his Sandevastan. <laughs> I love that you two are the ones making all the fucking Cyberpunk jokes. You're doing my the job Sponge for me. Devastan. Why the fuck am I even here? <laughs> the Sandevastan. Oh my god. De- <laughs> Sorry. Please continue. It's because Sandy invented it. I'm, not, I'm enjoying yeah. these too much. I'm enjoying these bits too much. Fucking so, hell. So <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so Spongebob is chasing after them, and Karen obliges, and it's just like, uh, oh, they went that way. So Gary and, and Squidbot are running amok. They they cause a multi-car pileup, <laughs> <laughs> so, which causes all the, the denizens of Binary Bottom to chase after them. They go through Sandy's place. Sandy, whose name in this one is Sandroid. That's fun. I like that. Yeah, that's creative, that at fine, least. But she's just a... She's just a big head. Um, at first, I thought, "Oh, it's a ship, right?" She's aboard like a, a ship that's shaped like she a like, head. Is she like? Is she in the tree dome? One entity? No, no. She's just a head. She's just a big mechanical like sandy cheeks. So head. she's like Zordon from Power Rangers, <laughs> or Zardoz from Zardoz. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking like Brainiac's yeah. ship from like um, Injustice Two, like the big skull ship. Mm. So yeah, they they end up <laughs> this bit. This bit fucking had me howling. Uh, they end up at uh, Lube Lagoon. No! I don't like that. I don't like that. No, 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 no. I'm tapping out. I don't know. That sounds like a good Saturday night to me, girl. <laughs> Lube, Lagoon. Lube Lagoon. So, yeah, we're treated to, you know, a few shots of Lube Lagoon. Um, and then, out of nowhere, in front of the Lube Lagoon sign, uh, some electricity begins to crackle and a doorway appears. And out of that doorway appears Grandpa. Patrick's granddad, <laughs> who has apparently just time traveled to this location. It, the, doctor, so do, Doctor Who, <laughs> Doctor Who, Patrick. Yeah, <laughs> I'll come back to that because that does actually come back in one of my later episodes. No, <laughs> oh my God, no, it does, it does. Oh. But he sees all of, uh, he sees all of these robots that look like look like the residents of Bikini Bottom charging at him. Uh, obviously, they're after Gary and Squidward for just making a mess of everything. But he thinks they're coming after him, so he instantly teleports away. So then, chasing after them, SpongeBob's like, "What? What do I do? What do I do?" And then he pushes a button on his hand that says "Think," and then like a little holographic thought cloud appears next to him and just cycles through just a bunch of random PNGs. Now, like, you guys will be better qualified to answer this than, than I am, but, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't, like, a lot of, not a lot of older Sponge, Spongebob had, like, many, like, photorealistic elements Actually, in it? Actually, no. 
Sponge, SpongeBob had quite a few in some ways. The thing here that is uh, so so crazy to me is that it seems like SpongeBob is like stealing Jimmy Neutron bit and doing yeah. a brain blast <laughs> kind of and, actually and or constructing his like sherlock style mind palace <laughs> <laughs> i mean again kind of it just it's really kind of odd because he cycles through a bunch of images and the one he lands on is a brick wall and he's like oh that's perfect so he hits another button on his other hand that says rocket <laughs> and a, a giant rocket appears on his back and he then rockets to in front of the angry mob and then builds a photorealistic brick wall. And just looking at it, it you you can kind of tell it's like... Has like this Shutterstock watermark it's on just, it. Yeah, it's just oh, like a no. Shutterstock. And it just... The reason I bring up the photorealistic stuff is because it like, feels super lazy. Yeah, rather than animating a brick wall. <laughs> it feels like a lot of, you know, live action content in early Spongebob. It was like a cutaway to that. Or like a single, mm. like still live action image. It wouldn't typically be an object that needs to be interacted with or like holistically part of the world. That's why I think I found it so jarring. Was because like this isn't how this is normally done in in or in this show and in shows like it. But yeah, so he he builds a, a photorealistic brick wall uh, in front of the the shore so that Gary doesn't plummet into the what I can only assume is a, assume is judging by the name a lagoon full of lube. <laughs> Which again, it sounds like a good time. He'd be so slimy. He'd be so He'd slimy. Be so we can do some lube wrestling in Lube Lagoon. So little friction. I wonder if they'll bring Lube Lagoon back for another episode. <laughs> feels like a very feels like a very meaty concept, honestly. I'm sure they will. There's all kind of depression. I wrestled with these... Hoodoo Guru in Lube Lagoon. Anyway, sorry, tell. <laughs> oh no. No. Uh, so yeah, naturally it doesn't work. Everyone goes barreling through the photorealistic wall um, and goes into the lagoon but that just it just fixes it they they all resurface and everything's fine it just fine. works <laughs> it just works it just works it just works except for it just works. In, in lube lagoon it's <laughs> we're we're in the good part in lube lagoon <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to get through this guys <laughs> Please go I'm trying real hard. I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm almost there. In Lube Lagoon? <laughs> In my restless dreams, I see that town, Lube Lagoon. So actually, we need to take a break for a word from our sponsor, Lube Lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> Lube Lagoon. I, that's why we've been saying it so much. It's because literally I have another sponsorship deal with Lube Lagoon. It's, it's like a car place. They're meant to be the like competitor to Jiffy Lube. Oh. Listen, we don't have time to go into it. Here's another QR code up in the side of the screen. You figure out where it goes. <laughs> All right. Bring us home, Charlie. We're ready for the touchdown. I can't wait. So then suddenly from beneath the surface of, of Lube Lagoon, we see the silhouette of the Sandroid head. <laughs> Again, it's just a head. There's nothing else. But it, it bursts out of the lagoon and it has morphed all the other robots together into a big body. So they're just like this mass of different robot faces and, and bodies all kind of... <laughs> I I never thought I'd see Sandy perform the third impact. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's so bizarre. It's such a strange ending because Sandroid r releases a bunch of cables from its mouth and then like s like picks up all the the robots on the beach and they all get assimilated and then it goes up to you know the little island that you see at the top yeah. like, of the surface yeah. above Bikini yeah. Bottom. It then goes up and sits on the the little island and rides it like an airboat. <laughs> Like, it's fucking Burt Reynolds. What the fuck? Across the water. The diver then reappears and says, Robots w will replace us? Well, anything can happen in a cartoon. Which I feel like is a poor excuse to just have random shit happening instead of writing a plot. No, genuinely. <laughs> so then yeah. I, I was thinking when you told me the whole premise of, like, uh, the title zone, Charlie. This is the kind of episodes that people start to write when they are properly sick of the show they're making they're, they're like please dear god cancel us <laughs> yeah it it permeated throughout all the ones i watched it's just like we're so reaching here we're so trying to put an idea together but it's just throwing shit at the wall 
and putting it all it's, on the back. It's either that or, like, listen, it's the episode where they're robots. People are just going to watch it. Like, it doesn't really matter what the content of it is. Which is equally lazy. As long as it hits the 11-minute mark. Oh, what, we couldn't? Ah, better have a three-minute episode to make up for it. <laughs> I, I've got to say, like... We joke a lot in these episodes about the fact that in the new season, Sandy is just this, like, fucking diabolical, like, evil yeah. scientist. So it feels fitting that in this episode we would finally see this. You'd be like, yes, I have, like, ascended beyond the need for a body. <laughs> I will simply make my body out of you. She's not Rebecca in this one. She's Alt Cunningham. Yeah. <laughs> and that was And that was Welcome to Binary Bottom. What a fucking episode. And what a debut from Charlie. T I, I never want to go back. Like, the binary seems overrated, no, honestly. I mean, yeah. It is. <laughs> Trust me, it is. This huh? Pride Month, oh, let's man. all become non binary. Let's fucking do <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. Let's do it. Leave a comment if you're non binary. Yeah. Yeah, do it. Gus, do you want. What, what was your first episode? My first episode is called Jolly Lodgers. Okay. Jolly Lodgers at Lube Lagoon. <laughs> Jolly Lodgers. Uh, you would be. Where are these Jollies getting lodged? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck sake, it shouldn't have gotten me. Jolly Lodger, I hardly know her. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so you two, picture this. Wide shot. Squidward's house has a circus tent over it. Why? Why, why do we have... <laughs> why, pray it, tell? Why in one session do we have multiple circus tents? Because I have a circus one, too. <laughs> SpongeBob jumps out his window, like, like, squash stretches over to Squidward and goes, Oh boy, a circus! He loves this. He loves it so much. <laughs> He's got balloons and popcorn. And then Squidward goes, It's not a circus. It, I'm, I'm being fumigated because there's <laughs> sea urchins in my house. That's a good gag, actually. <laughs> that, that's kind of funny, all right? I'll give them that. You know, broken clocks and all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, like, you know, so that is, like, basically the first, like, minute of this because Patrick comes tumbling out of the fumigation tent, like, and he says, like, Squidward's circus is boring and this cotton candy's gone stale and he's eating a whole bag of cotton balls. From presumably Squidward's bathroom? I thought you were going to say gonna he's like, like... He's eating the asbestos. No, I thought... I, yeah, no, you're so right, Charlie, because I was going to say... I thought he'd be like eating <laughs> loft insulation. <laughs> it's got like blood oozing from between his teeth. That would be funnier. <laughs> and, and honestly, it could happen in modern Spongebob is yeah, the thing. Exactly, I wouldn't put it past them. So, so Spongebob and Patrick are being complete buffoons about this whole circus thing. Greasy buffoons, would you say? D d maybe. Yeah. Maybe lubed buffoons? Maybe not. <laughs> I daren't say. Lubed buffoons at Lube Lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down! <laughs> <laughs> See how lube buffoons at Lube Lagoon. <laughs> and if you get some in your mouth, spit it into the spittoon. Sorry. So, Go so much so much like the lube buffoons at Lube Lagoon, Squidward wants to slide away from his problems, and we follow <laughs> his perspective into the bus and to the Halibut Hotel, not to be confused with another hotel with that same, with those same initials. Welcome to the oh Crusty Towers, where our motto is Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself. Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself. <laughs> It's always oh, funny. That's great. <laughs> no, this is a this is a different. It's never not good. This is a different hotel episode. Is it one with some kind of radio demon <laughs> or so many different shades of red? Why would anyone do anything? Sheer absolute boredom. Like boredom. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, damn. Squidward the radio demon goes into this hotel and meets this like oddly <laughs> intense shark who's behind the desk who's like the manager of the hotel <laughs> like he's like very like he's very like oh I'm not the manager I just play one on TV <laughs> <laughs> then why's he here? he's just like squash stretching all over the place and like Squidward asks for a room and the guy's like, oh, well, there is one left, but it's gone now. And Squidward's like, how is that a good thing for me? And he goes, because I just gave it to you. That makes me, this is the weirdest pull. And SpongeBob uh... Boys is the time for our weird pulls. I'm doing a weird pull right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Loop Lagoon. Wait, you said yeah. we a weird pull? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I didn't know it was that kind of Welcome show. To SpongeBob it's... Boys. <laughs> but um, it, it reminds me of the last words of the German philosopher Gay. Georg Hegel, which uh, have <laughs> stuck with me forever. His last words were, only one man ever understood me, and even he didn't understand me. 
<laughs> That's really good. And you in the comments, leave us your weirdest pulls. Yeah. Or the weirdest place that you've pulled. You in the comments, leave your last words. <laughs> and we'll come and fucking kill you. <laughs> Make sure they're memorable. You want to go exactly. on a high note, don't you? <laughs> oh, we will be activating our sender <laughs> stands and coming for you. <laughs> Let's go choose! Oh, Cyber Psycho boys! Oh, go Cyber Psycho! Yeah. Oh no! Oh, anyway, so, so we're in the weirdly intense actor slash manager shark's lobby and he's given the room to Squidward. So then, so then Squidward leaves that whole scene behind and goes up to the room and he's like, he's in the nice, like, luxurious hotel room and like the first thing he does is lie down on the bed and like fucking Junchi Ito the melting classroom liquefy. I was gonna say, does he get chased out of this hotel room by a, a naked old woman? No. <laughs> in the shower? No, he they just... just do the shining, that'd be so funny. Oh, wait. Just wait. wait. No, literally just wait. What kid watching SpongeBob has seen the shining? Oh, but just wait, actually, though. Oh my god. So so Squidward melts into the bed, and then there's a kind of interesting cut where it just shows the bathtub, and like he rehydrates in the bathtub back to his full size. <laughs> so kind of kind of a it's gross and weird, but it's kind of funny. Like he's in the bathtub and he's like, oh, this is heaven. Which it's not. It it's hell. It's it's hell because SpongeBob and Patrick are here. Oh, so this is a Squidward torture porn episode. Yep, yep. So outside okay, the fun. the bathroom in the hotel room, we just see SpongeBob enter and like run through the room, and Patrick is there too, and they are just running around. And Squidward's like, "Who's out there? What's what's going on out there?" SpongeBob and Patrick describe this game they're playing as. Hotel Slam and Run, which like, you know, I I've done a few of those, but I mean I play a variation yeah. of that. <laughs> God damn it. Nothing wrong with that. Similar to Nut and Bowl. Or I have been known to. <laughs> it is similar to Nut and Bowl. But no, alright. When I'm prediction. Cold. Prediction. Hotel Slam SpongeBob and, Run. and Patrick are gonna do a come play with us, Squidward. Forever I was gonna and say, ever that... and ever. Almost, but it's lazier, and you'll oh, wow. and we'll get to that. We're not there yet. By the time Squidward comes out of his room and goes to order room service, Patrick and SpongeBob are gone. Uh, but he calls the downstairs lobby, and they're both dressed as bellhops, and they're answering the phone. Why though? They, because they work here now, I guess. Squidward orders the blue plate special, and SpongeBob, holding his nose to like put on this voice, goes, "Oh yes, all of our plates are blue," and just cut to Patrick dyeing all of the plates in blue paint. Oh my god. Okay. So then. So then the weirdly intense shark man shows up again, who like is just very excited that these boys are, are working for him <laughs> and feeds them candy. They they bark like seals. This is the Epstein Hotel. <laughs> yeah. At the Epstein Hotel. I mean, I've heard of puppy play, <laughs> but I have play? a dream. I'm here to tell. No. <laughs> The Jeffrey Epstein Island Resort. Come let your troubles melt away at our beautiful Lube Lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> Fun for the whole family. Yeah, uh, how did bring the kids? So anyway, SpongeBob and Patrick go up to deliver the food. They they never deliver the food. They just show up and they're like, "Oh, Squidward's here!" And for some reason, Patrick's like, "Oh, well, why don't you introduce me?" And SpongeBob's like, "It's Squidward, our neighbor, who we always know." And Patrick's like, "If you say so." Whose life we make a living hell? Yeah, the guy, that guy we torment. So the the yeah. incredible thing about this is the implication that SpongeBob and Patrick only just when they got to the room found out it was Squidward, meaning that they were pranking and painting blue the plates of the entire hotel just indiscriminately. They are the fucking funny game. Duo. They just show up, <laughs> have ambiguous supernatural powers, and make everything worse. So these demons are here because there's a jellyfishing convention in the hotel, um, but they will not leave Squidward alone. They torment him in numerous ways, the most memorable of which is Squidward is getting a massage, then it's revealed that they have, like, like hands on sticks tormenting him like they're poking and prodding him with like squidward goes like oh you have magic fingers and they're like magic fingers squidward yeah. and they start beating him with these like blue hands this is making me think of um this is such a weird uncle thing this is one of those techniques that i think you just you just get to learn when you become an uncle do either of you remember <laughs> devil finger 
Oh, not Devil Finger. Oh my god. Just I just fully remember my my uncle just being like Devil Finger and just like poking me with his finger in a sinister <laughs> No, that's fashion. from a bit. That's a that's a bit from a, a CBBC show back Yeah, in the and day. it's fully just something the only uncles do. I feel like it might yeah. even be like a UK uncle specific thing because yeah, like I think my it uncle is. never knew knew that technique. Maybe you should teach your uncle devil thing. My uncle's like most powerful technique was make bonfire and burn off all his leg hair. <laughs> That reminds me! This, again, SpongeBob Boys is not a structured show. It's fine to just fucking go on these stupid tangents. But uh, yeah. there, there's this kid, I won't say his name. But... We play it organic here. Who's gonna get mad at us? The poet of fall? No, I'm it's gonna so edit true. that bit out. So anyway, this, the, the, this, fucking, um, the, this fucking kid who I knew in high school, I'd go in his house and he used to do bonfires. And like all children, I love fire. Who doesn't like. Just recreationally. But here's the thing. So he had this big, like, tract of land behind his house where there was, like, loads of, like, scrap and wood and stuff. Because he and his mom, like, lived at his granddad's house. And his granddad would make this big bonfire out of all of this scrap. And I fully just remember this fucking granddad walking up to this pile of fucking, like, shit that's already burning with a jerry can of petrol and just throwing <laughs> more onto it. And looking back, I'm like, that was so dangerous. That transcends borders. There are just there are just these men out there in the world who are just firemen. Like they don't prevent firemen. they don't prevent fires. They don't it's not their occupation. They just ambiently want to be around and cause fire. Meet the pyro. Yeah, those are called arsonists, guys. But Henry, what you don't realize is that that pile of scrap was the neighbor's house and they were <laughs> hiding evidence. That's so funny. Yeah, there's this kind of screaming <laughs> sound coming out of the pyre. Oh, yeah. Listen, there's a difference between arson and just arson around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. That's a one that's the right. All right. All right. Let's go back this to this hotel arson. of horrors. Hey, someone arson around. Yeah. <laughs> I love Wallace and Gromit. So the thing is, um, SpongeBob and Patrick are like tormenting Squidward everywhere he goes, and then we get the they're standing at the end of the hall like The Shining, but they don't say the bit. Uh... Instead, Squidward just runs away from them, tense because he knows what the reference is, but the kids watching this don't. And so he runs down the hall. He runs into another pair of SpongeBob and Patrick, runs the other way. And he keeps doing more over-the-top reactions where there's, like, multiple of his heads. He, like, opens his mouth and, like, a Pac-Man ghost sound, like, happens as his eyes go out of his mouth and, like, point at them. Here's the thing. What, what's so annoying about this specific instance is that them doing the quote reference would have made complete contextual sense. But they didn't because for some reason, the joke that they have here instead is Squidward runs back and forth between SpongeBob and Patrick so many times that just for some reason, Mrs. Puff is there and he does a scared reaction <gasps> to her and then what? he runs back and it's just SpongeBob and Patrick again. What a random fucking pull. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were talking about weird pulls. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Squidward <laughs> is like freaked out by SpongeBob and Patrick, and he's like got his back to a door, and he's like, "Get away from me, you two! Leave me alone! I don't want to see you anywhere in the hotel. I just want to be alone." And they're like, "Well, don't go in that room if you want to be alone." And Squidward's like eyes are bugging out, and he's like, "Are are you two already in that room?" <laughs> That's kind of terrifying. That that moment was like pretty funny to me. It was room 237. What really <laughs> happens is that Squidward gets pulled into that room because that's where the jellyfish convention is happening. And the jellyfishers just like love bomb him. Like they give him a shirt. They give him like uh like a jellyfish hat. They they give him like all this like jellyfish merchandise. They they do they give him they do a little like caricature of him from like one of those like theme park character artists correct me if i'm wrong but doesn't like it doesn't classically like squidward think like the spongebob's hobby of jellyfishing is kind of lame yeah well that's the thing squidward doesn't like being here like even though everybody <laughs> uh... loves squidward and wants him to be a, be a part of things he like desperately wants to get out 
but everyone loves him so much at this convention that he like can't leave. Oh my god, it's the Hotel California. <laughs> I'm, I'm genuinely you can like check in anytime you like, but you may never leave. How do you come up with this? Like, if it it feels psychologically drugs and immense laziness. Yeah. Also, also, what's so wild about this moment is that in the background we see. Kevin the Cucumber just standing there doing a photo op with people, and he has no lines. He's just there in the background. Yeah, it's like, remember? Remember when this was a character? His episode was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, there's a bit like that. There's a bit like that in There's the tons of bits trust. like that in, in the later season SpongeBob. Yeah, I just like, remember when this was a good show and characters showed up for reasons? But also, it's like, it's also like play to your audience because, like, Again, like, you know, we, we've talked about, like, the weird references and parodies for, of things that, like, adults will get, but adults aren't watching this show and kids won't get. But, like, why can't they, why can I, can they not fathom that, like, hey, yo, the people that will probably get what the earlier parts of the show that this was referencing, unless they're kids who've seen, like, a rerun, they're, they're not going to know what episode that's from. That's a really good point, actually. The people who get all that episode's from are, are you, Henry, <laughs> and are currently not watching Spongebob apart from for this. But why have only the kids' ratings when you can also have, like, you know, YouTubers talk about the episode, like, they brought back this person. <laughs> but, but that's the thing, like, it, it's one of the things where it's like, it just occurred to me, you saying that, Charlie, that, like, yeah, a kid might be like, yeah, Bubble Bass from Swamp Mates. You know? <laughs> it's so true. Like, it's like, did you know that Bubble Bass has been around since season one? Yeah, exactly. The, the show just took a break because it had restraint? The thing is, Nickelodeon has always had this problem because off mic the other day, you and I, Gus, were discussing the fact that, like, Sam and Cat was inherently a failure because by the time it came out, the people who were into Victorious and iCarly had already aged out of Nickelodeon, so that was a spin-off show for nobody. Like, it's, it's the problem of Genuinely. sometimes when people treat these kids' shows like they're going to be consumed the same way as adult shows, when that's really not the intention. Yeah, because, like, at least in The Simpsons' case, a lot of the people who were watching it never aged out of it. Yeah, because The Simpsons was always meant for adults. Yeah, like, if you were, mm. like, a teenager, or if you were, like, in your 20s when you started watching The Simpsons, you're still old enough for The Simpsons for, like, the rest of time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, honestly, very good point about seasonal rot. So, Squidward is trying to get out of there, and he finds a big jellyfish costume that he gets inside, and he's like, ah, no one will find me in this jellyfish costume. Does he get turbo man? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's... It turns out that, like, the big jellyfish mascot hunt was about to begin, so they start no. hunting down Squidward in the, in the jellyfish costume. Because why not, right? <laughs> why not at this stage? Why not? It seems like the most logical yeah. outcome from where this began with... Wait, let me check my notes. Squidward's house getting... Yeah, dishes. you're so right! <laughs> like, the way a Spongebob episode starts will have nothing to do with how it ends. It does loop back around in a very strange Wait, way. no, you're kidding! Because here's the thing. Squidward finds out that there's a shock button inside the costume, so he just starts zapping everybody to get them away from him. He has been Turbo Man. Charlie was right. He's been Turbo Man. I was right. <laughs> Nobody likes you, Squidward. <laughs> so Squidward, uh, among other shock things, he turns into a big electric plug at one point and shocks the ground so that all the like jellyfishers are like electrocuted. This is Squidward's super villain arc. I'm obsessed. And then he goes, he goes downstairs and shocks the shark as well. <laughs> Who isn't even part of the convention? <laughs> and he takes the phone and he calls the exterminators. This is just petty vengeance. And he says, "You gotta get down to Halibut Hotel. There's been an infestation of jellyfish fanatics. Oh. <laughs> they show oh. up and kill everybody. Literally, they show up. No questions asked. Nobody <laughs> enters the building. They throw a big fumigation tent over it and immediately start pumping in the gas." <laughs> Did Squidward kill an entire hotel full of people? No, no. The entire the entire hotel is evacuated. Everybody leaves. Everybody leaves. They're all coughing and hacking. SpongeBob and Patrick are outside and they'll be like, oh, wow, I wonder what happened with Squidward. And Patrick still doesn't know who he is. But then 
we cut to Squidward in his room with a gas mask doing a single person conga and celebrating that he finally gets to be alone. Two episodes into our God seven damn. episode episode and I'm losing my fucking gusso. So I'm not going to make things any less weird <laughs> with, with my next episode, <laughs> Chatterbox Gary. That, uh, that title alone brings up a horrifying implication. This episode yeah, has sounds... a weird-ass cameo, and I look oh. forward to telling you about it. Is that what the G in ChatGPT stands for? <laughs> it's Chatterbox Gary PT. <laughs> Yes, because when it's you start so activating funny. it, you get trapped in PT. <laughs> oh, God. It's a recurring nightmare hallway. All right. Yeah. So, Chatterbox Gary starts with, like... It... I have one of those in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. God. So, it's really funny because, Charlie, you were talking about, like, the brick wall, the kind of, like, very obvious, like, money-saving things so they didn't have to animate. The start of this episode is, like over animated you know when it's like spongebob has always as a sponge done kind of like weird like strange physical comedy with the fact that like oh you know sponges have like weird physiology i know what you mean like when he's like really mm. squashing and stretching because in my episode they did that with both spongebob at the beginning and with the shark guy like he was just constantly over animated but it's even weirder than that so all right so we open on spongebob's living room He's sitting in it with Gary. He's like wearing reading glasses and he's reading like a like pet magazine and he's got a page open on like goo balls, which is <laughs> the goo balls of Loob Lagoon. Get your goo balls at Loob Lagoon. <laughs> I love how it just it compounds. This is just the most viscous episode of SpongeBob <laughs> Boys you've ever the seen. The sloshiest it's episode all over the place. I think what I hate is the fact that this isn't even the most viscous episode. <laughs> um, it's goo balls, and SpongeBob's like, "See, Gary, it's normal to have goo balls." And then Gary hawks up a goo ball, which SpongeBob catches in a catcher's mitt. Gary starts meowing, and SpongeBob is like, "Oh, you're hungry." Uh, the first, like, weird over-animated animated moment, rather than taking the glasses off, um, you know those old-fashioned uh, kind of military time alarm clocks where before digital was invented, they were, like, flaps? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the ones you mean. Good. Like, his eyes kind of just flap around to reveal eyes that aren't <laughs> wearing glasses. That's Interesting. Really <laughs> so, I think at first he's like, oh, do you, like... That's his latest cybernetic organization. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? his new cyberware. You need to get some chrome on your SpongeBob. <laughs> but no, here's the thing. It, Check out these optics. It gets weirder because then um, I think he, he, he's, he's like going to get a leash out or something for Gary. And he just open like he opens the front of his body as though he is opening a fridge door, revealing like his skeleton and organs behind. And the front part of him that he's opened, the inside of it has, like, equipment in it. Okay, so so I hate that, that there was an episode in this running that they were robots, but this isn't the one, yeah. and he's doing this shit. Yeah. I was gonna say, like, hang on, surely this should have been in the one I watched. This is Cyber Psycho Spongebob. Yeah. They're so, they're like, you mentioned before, Henry, that, like, yeah, SpongeBob's always done, like, kind of weird <laughs> things with his physiology, but, like, didn't they have, like, maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but, like, didn't they have an episode where he dresses up as a ghost and the way he gets the sheet to, to be a curve rather than square? Is by, like, yeah, Patrick off, sands like, his head his down. Body. That's true. That's yeah. true. He was a living organism at one point, and now he's just like a compartment for things. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. He's <laughs> a nightmare. That's, that's a metaphor for the franchise, really. It's like he once was a living organism, and now he's a compartment for things. <laughs> yeah. And those things are almost always the weird fetish that the writer of the week has. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I think he pulls a leash out and Gary's like, no, I don't want that. Gary keeps me out. And then Spongebob's like, oh, you Coward. want food. At which point Spongebob's tongue sticks out, revealing a can of snail food in his mouth. Oh. Do you know what I mean? It's just like they're doing too much with him. 
<laughs> you couldn't animate him going to the fridge and getting the can. Like it's like we just need the can here now. <laughs> so he can puke it up. But anyway, so he feeds it to yeah, him. That's the other thing. It's like everything within these episodes happens so quick. Yeah, the pacing is mm, nuts. Mm. It's it's too far. It's goo balls. <laughs> it's it goo is goo balls. balls, but it's about to get gooier. Well, not really, but weirder. Oh, so lovely. he pulls out the food. <laughs> Gary doesn't want it. Gary is just meowing angrily. And SpongeBob is like, ah, oh, if only there was some way I could like know what you're saying. And then he looks at the magazine on the oh, ground boy. and they're advertising a new product that is like a <laughs> cyber augmentation like a band with a speaker on it that you can put around a snail's shell and it translates it into english or should i say cyber bob punk pants <laughs> this is gary's new tr new translator mod <laughs> but this has been done before this has been done before fucking rick and morty did yeah. this with the the season one rick and morty did this gravity falls did this with um uh, with Waddles, where he was voiced by ne by Neil deGrasse Tyson. And you're going to yeah. get a similar weird thing in this episode. So, SpongeBob calls up the help center, and Charlie, you're about to be angry because they did a joke that was a joke that is incredibly similar to one we did on Less is Morgue, but no. less funny. No. Oh, no! Call, calls up the person, they? she's like, Hi, I'm from the, like, uh, talking machine office. Uh, would you like to buy one? He's like, yeah, I'd like to buy one. He's like, oh, what delivery package would you like? Standard, premium, or hyperdrive? And he goes, oh, I'll get hyperdrive. She is like, oh, awesome. Your package was delivered last Thursday. And then he turns around to see a box and is like, oh, I wondered what that was. And oh, I, I just personally yeah. think we did it with Bob Skeeter the Rat Getter in The Rat and It. Yeah, we did that with Bob Skeeter the Rat Getter. That's my bit, you <laughs> two absolute bastards. And it was a good bit, too. <laughs> That's my fucking bit. Char You've bit by Charlie this. Charlie going full uh, cat in the hat. I think we have a case. <laughs> anyway, that's <laughs> later. Uh, I'm just saying, oh, yeah. I think you've got a case. Yeah. Oh yeah. oh yeah! Oh yeah! I'll get you and I'll make it look like a bloody accident. <laughs> Gus watched Cat in the Hat for the first time yesterday. I, I did. We'll talk about it off mic. It's so much to unpack. God. Anyway, he opens it, takes it out, he puts it on Gary. Gary starts to meow. Just give it to me straight, Doc. The, Who, who's the, the voice? The voice oh. of Gary's English voice is Keith David. Oh what? god, Keith, why? So, You're so much so, better than so this. So just this incredibly like smooth, sexy voice. Oh, Keith David has a phenomenal yeah, right, voice. He's like, hey, Sponge Papa. And he's like, he, he's like talking to him. And it's so like fucking odd and surreal. <laughs> No, that is weird. I know I referenced this earlier, but it's just like, SpongeBob, get to the Burger Town! <laughs> Especially because, like, you know, old sponge heads will know that, like, in Gary's dream, he had, like, a fucking, like, he sounded like, um, stole this hell of a boss. Here's the thing. I will say, weirdly, Gary's characterization in this is at least partially on point with that mm, like he's he's like oddly like worldly and like yeah no he, he is he is but the first thing that happens is spongebob asks him like oh you know there's so much i've always wanted to ask you um i guess first i'll ask what do you dream about and again keith david who is doing like maximum like smooth and sexy this whole episode i swear it, that's 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 also in the gravity Falls yeah version, no though, it's true the, mm. but he, he's like most of the time I dream of flying. And like shows like Gary flying over the city. I suppose it's like, ah. Oh. And he's like, yes, I dream I'm flying way above Bikini Bottom, raining down fire on my enemies. <laughs> he's like, oh my God. fire down That's onto the kind of city. Funny. I actually kind of like yeah. that. <laughs> and Jeez. we're just kind of like, oh, I kind of regret asking now. Naturally, now it's like, it's time for the, uh, the fun and games portion of the episode. We just get some shtick where they kind of fulfill the promise of the premise a little bit. Yeah. SpongeBob takes... Uh, <laughs> takes Gary with his new Keith David voice uh, around town to like meet different people. First, he uh, meets Patrick and um, <laughs> Gary is like, like, hey there, stinky man. And Patrick what? like smells up and is like, wow, no, you're right. I am kind of ripe right now. At which point Patrick grabs a garbage can and turns it upside down, covering himself in, like, filth and sludge. 
Um, and Patrick oh. goes, ah, oh, all better, no. and then begins to, like, this. suck some of the sludge off of his hand. No! <laughs> Patrick's oh, only characterization is just being fucking revolting these days. Filthy! Rancid. But Disturbing! Fucking it's awful. Anyway, so... He's a messy bitch. Go ahead, this, this next bit got the only, like, sincere laugh of the episode out of me, and not the way they intended. He, he next takes Gary to Sandy, and... Gary starts speaking to her. What he says to her, like, doesn't matter. What matters is that uh, Sandy says, like, oh, um, that tech is old new. I built a nut translator years ago. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I've uh, never heard it called that yeah, before. I don't know about that one, Sandy. So she then pulls out a walnut. And puts a tiny technological hat on it. At which point, the walnut just begins, like, screaming and muttering incoherently. <laughs> and then Sandy, like, laughs and takes the little hat off and is like, walnuts are the nuttiest of all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, wait, a- yeah, no, I get it, I get it, I get the joke now. That's actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, again, That's broken yours. Just, that. yeah, all right. just the Just the <laughs> Sandy cursed a walnut. <laughs> with sentience. The implication is not that Sandy cursed it with sentience. Just it's that, that it was already. Like this. Yeah, it, it was, was already like this, yeah. and now we get to like hear it. It's like that two sentence horror story about the trees declaring war. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so true. So, <laughs> so next, naturally, um, it's Squidward. Uh, thankfully, Mr. Oh, yeah. Krabs wasn't actually in any of my episodes today, so we at least avoided him being like a complete fucking sociopath. Clancy Brown is fucking busy. <laughs> so, goes to Squidward. Gary is let into Squidward's house, and there is actually this other pretty decent joke. SpongeBob is like, "Oh, I'm I'm trying to uh, show Gary around to everyone." Squidward is like, "Why are you talking to Gary? Gary can't talk." And then Gary starts to talk, and um, Squidward goes, but why would you hang out with him? And Squidward goes, because he's my best friend. And Squidward goes, I was talking to Gary, which is a decent joke. I like that. Yeah, no. Yeah. Gary right. slithers into Squidward's room and is like, ah, these walls, this carpet. Squidward is like, oh, I'll give you the grand tour. He's like showing him around and shows him to this room where all the art is. And Squid is like, yeah, here are all of my uh, most advanced pieces. And Gary's like, ah, yes, no, these are done in the, the classic naive Squid style. Not very sophisticated at all. Is just like going around his house, like roasting like his art and his taste in decor <laughs> and what he watches on TV. Oof. Oh my God. Oof. At which point Squidward like kicks Gary out. And vows revenge. Classic Squidward fashion. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I can feel this going off the rails. Yeah, no, exactly. It's one of those things where literally at this moment, well, the next beat that happened, I was like, damn, I didn't expect this episode to go here. SpongeBob is laying down for the night, and Gary is like bedding down on some newspaper next to SpongeBob's bed, as he always does. Pan up. Squidward is like Mission Impossible style stuck to the ceiling of Spongebob's house, wearing, <laughs> like, a black beanie and, like, a black jumper. And he, like, slowly, like, using his suction cups, moves down the wall, and he takes the speaking device off of Gary, and instead what? puts puts a sweatband with a walkie-talkie onto Gary. What?! Oh no! Okay. This is. I see where this is this going. This is next level revenge! So, Squidward then crawls out of the window and with his own walkie talkie, I can't tell if it's Roger Bumpus doing an amazing Keith David impression or if Keith David is just dubbing over Squidward in these scenes. But Squidward talking through okay. Gary's thing is like, SpongeBob, I'm thirsty. Squidward needs to get him some water. Then he's like, oh. Spongebob, uh, like, my my bed is lumpy, and Spongebob puts him up on his bed. I mean, Henry, bed. I'm still amazed that they aff- they could afford Keith David. Keith David has been in some, like, weird shit. He would play, like, the lead detective in, like, internet-based horror movies, like Smiley and Chain yeah. Letter. <laughs> oh my god, he's in Smiley! Yeah. Yeah, no, so Sp- not late Smiley! Spongebob is not the worst thing he's in. Squidward slash maybe Keith David is like telling Spongebob to do all of these unreasonable things while he's tired. And there's this one bit where he is like, oh, it's so stuffy in here, Spongebob. 
and SpongeBob opens the window. It's like, oh no, it's still much too hot. So SpongeBob takes out a giant hammer and just hammers out a portion of his bedroom wall. What I love about this is that, like, this is his solution for, for like, temperature. Tired, to be fair. Also, they're fucking, they're underwater. Yeah. Like, that's not going to change the, the temperature. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Doesn't matter anymore, does it? So, at this point, Squidward goes, Oh, the view looks much nicer from over there, SpongeBob. Cut to SpongeBob with, like, a jack under his house, lifting it up. And SpongeBob is inserting wheels onto his house. So, <laughs> it... <laughs> This is the most drastic thing to do because, like, you know, your cat told you to do it. It's real, like, son of Sam shit. But anyway, so the house then just rolls away. SpongeBob loses control of it and it just, like, rolls off into the city. And while Squidward is, like, laughing... So the revenge is now SpongeBob. No, homeless. literally, you joke. The, the funny thing is Squidward is, like, laughing in his house and the next morning SpongeBob is just sobbing on the empty plot of land where his house was. Going, like, oh, Jesus. we don't have anywhere to live anymore, Gary. Squidward took this too far Jesus. and also, like, the plot was supposed to be Gary can talk now and now it's <laughs> yeah. Squidward... Squidward is ruining yeah. SpongeBob's life. I yeah, mean, now it's SpongeBob is destitute. I mean, to be fair, this is Squidward has like loaded up a lot of revenge points over the years. But, That's okay, true. okay, but here's the thing: Squidward crashed on SpongeBob's house for like years when he lost his job at the Krusty Krab. <laughs> So, like, does this end with like SpongeBob turning tricks for like Ben and Board? No, no, the thing is, the thing is, <laughs> like it, a street corner. Ends, Who wants to get into these square pants? It, it ends in a way <laughs> like an that is holes, even boys. more like a different <laughs> that angle. Good. That didn't Jesus feel good, Christ, Charlie. <laughs> That's what this show is all about. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've had I've had many screwdrivers and I've run out. We of were joking juice. about the like Epstein. Wayland Resort earlier, you good. Anyway, so <laughs> no, here's the yeah. thing. This episode ends in like not that kind of weird, but an equally like a holy shit, is that's what that's what's happening here. So Gary notices that like Squidward is like standing behind a wall laughing, talking into a walkie-talkie. And Gary goes over, and I can't remember what Gary does, but Squidward, while laughing, ends up accidentally swallowing his walkie-talkie. What? So Sure. Th that's what? So then Gary starts talking into his own walkie-talkie, but it's Gary without his thing on, so he's just meowing. So it looks like Squidward is meowing. And as this is happening, someone who is walking by with their pet huh? worm that are like dogs in this universe hears Squidward meowing and goes ape and starts chasing him. And Squidward runs away while he's, like, compulsively meowing. And he runs into, like, a dog park. At which point they all surround him as he keeps trying to, like, cough up the thing, but he's meowing. And essentially, Squidward is savaged by dogs. What you're saying is the ending of this is fucking dog in the machine. Yeah. Is what you're so, saying. So then, SpongeBob is there, and the house rolls back into its proper place. So Spongebob has his house again. Like, is this related to, like, Squidward got savaged by dogs, therefore fortune now falls to Spongebob again? No, I think it's implied that it somehow went, like, all the way around the world and came back in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> That's way dumber! <laughs> it really is. <laughs> but then, and the last... It's lucky, because if the house had kept going and kept going around the world, then it would have turned time back to before this episode started. <laughs> we would have had to live through it again. Superman picks up the pineapple and <laughs> flies like... backwards with it around <laughs> the world. Seriously, the, fucking eats the it. last shot of the episode is a close-up on Gary, and Gary, voiced by Keith David, just goes, Meow. And the episode ends. God that was Chatterbox it. Gary. God damn it. Okay, so very promising episode, but then like like you were saying, the latter half, just there's nothing connecting it to anything. It's just this like Squidward, like Count of Monte Cristo revenge plot. <laughs> but that doesn't go super it's so well. Weird. These all just <laughs> they all just seem to fall apart. They're just like 
Here, here's a premise, and then uh, some random bullshit, and then the <laughs> You're end. You're so right, Charlie. That's literally all these are. They could have done something interesting. Like, the whole idea that the robot one just became an extended chase scene, and the fumigation mm. one ended up being Squidward going mad at a jellyfish convention in a costume that allows him to shock people. Please, Henry, the technical term is he got turbo Yeah, no, he got turbo <laughs> And But that's the thing, it's like, it almost feels like, um, you know, like, exquisite corpse writing, where it's like, different mm. people mm. write each bit without necessarily having knowledge of the previous bit. Yeah, no, it, do- yeah. it does kind of feel like that's that. That's what this is. It's complete, like, Mad Libs, pull shit out of a hat and see what happens. That's exactly what also, it is. Also, I gotta say, like, with Chatterbox Gary, because I know there's a similar episode with Patrick, I was so worried the whole time that it was going to be, like, another Flowers for Algernon thing. Yeah, where Gary is cursed with intelligence, which he then in the end, intentionally destroys his, like, intelligence again so we can and have And SpongeBob's like, I'm glad, I'm glad that Gary's back to normal and it's really uncomfortable. Why is it so weird? Like, because The Simpsons did one of this as well with the crayon lodged in Homer's brain. But what what cartoon oh, yeah. showrunner first read Flowers for Algernon and was like, this would make a great cartoon stock plot? You know, it, it, in the vein of like a body swap episode or an episode where they go to some thinly veiled Willy Wonka parody factory. And did they know that they were forever cursing people like us to have to watch them and talk about them on shows it's like true. this? It's true, it's That's true. That's the butterfly effect in action. <laughs> Welcome back to Speed On Bean On. I don't know if it's going to be an actual break, but... Welcome back to Speedo, bitches. You should put in, like... You should put in, like, an intermission with, like, elevator music. That would be <laughs> you, you, should, you should literally put in the, like, hang in there, baby card they used in yeah. the cat in the hat cup. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm easy like Sunday morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, put, put, that, put that card in and play Easy Like Sunday Morning backwards <laughs> to avoid <laughs> copyright. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and use this clip from the recording. Listen, the extended Patreon will have the cat in the hat uh, Patreon inserted into the middle of the SpongeBob Boys video. All right, Nevin, Charlie, time to die. Charlie, do you want to do the cat in the hat Patreon with Gus? <laughs> Yes, please. Oh my god. We could all three do it, because there's been ones where Let's, it's... We should all true. three but, do but, it. Yeah, we should, because the funniest thing would be it will just be all three of us yelling catchphrases from the movie for yeah, five yeah, minutes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Henry, I want to do that so badly. Yeah. Because I know... I suggested to Meg the other day, I said, um, Meg, you and Gus should finally officially record a Texas Chainsaw 2 Patreon. Oh, yes. Because oh, that would be a brilliant one. And because I know you want to do a Birdman one, Gus. Yeah, yeah. We, I really want to watch Birdman. I have oh, seen Char- it, so I, I, I'm down for that. Oh, yeah, Charlie, no, you, no, Charlie, you, you, you should watch it. You should, but bo- you should both go in dry. Because I, I recorded a couple recently with. Um, I finally got Gus to watch Hot Fuzz, and he loved it, which was it's vindicating. So good. I'm so glad that. You- Did you enjoy it, Gus? I yes. No, I can't. Like good. The accusation that good. I might not have is like no, insulting no, no. to me. I wasn't accusing. <laughs> I wasn't accusing. I just love. Just like, wanted to. I wanted to hear that positive reaction from you. I don't want to be caught understating how much I enjoyed that movie. Good. I'm so, so glad. All right. Oh, all right. Goodness. We're gonna save this for the after party. SpongeBob. Yeah. Boy. Yes. So. <laughs> okay. So, we're, we're, once more unto the breach, Charlie, what was, what was your second and weirdly third episode? So yeah, we got a, we got a double whammy here. Um, <laughs> let's wham and bam. <laughs> let's wham and bam at Loob Lagoon. <laughs> well, so the second of my three was called, uh, very creatively, uh, you're going to pay Ellipsy's phone. Oh. Uh, so yeah, the yeah. size says great, everything. Great, great. You know when the title joke is brilliant, you know the episode's gonna be brilliant. <laughs> yeah. And when it's mm-hmm. not, yeah. And when it's oh, not, oh yeah, just wait. So we're back with the diver guy. Oh right, because we're still in the title zone. We're still in the the title zone. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> we. <laughs> 
<laughs> they have they have actually a uh, a kind of sponge. This is the one thing I'll give like. Do they have like a little ukulele version of it? They do. They do have like a SpongeBobified version of the Twilight Zone theme song in the background, which is you know novel. But again, what kid knows what the fucking Twilight? Zone yeah, is? exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like all that effort. All the effort that went into doing that, that piece of music, and then it's just it's like... It's a great oh, reference yeah, but... for us sad adults who are forced to watch it for yeah. content. <laughs> a whole episode yeah. where they're robots and no Five Nights at Freddy's reference? They even work at a fast food joint. <laughs> oh my god, you're so right. <laughs> and the movie's coming out soon. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? You know what it is? It's because the writers are fucking old too, so like their pool of reference has nothing to do with their target demo. Yeah, absolutely. That's a huge part of like how these are written and, and what they write decide to reference yeah seems to be that like yeah and look i'm not ageist but like just, just some boomer shit okay yeah <laughs> okay boomer we're back with our presenter the diver the diver guy who is in a, a kind of uh weird art gallery filled with like oh they're doing the night gallery as well here's the thing like i didn't spot any the only thing i spot and i wasn't really looking for like easter eggs because you know I didn't go into this, like, spooling through every frame to be like, <laughs> analyze, enhance, enhance. 15 <laughs> things you may have missed in the title zone. Please, I'm not a Marvel content creator, okay? Oh! <laughs> this is going to make the next episode of MCU in Hell super awkward. <laughs> What's I've never heard of that show, Henry. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Hey, Charlie, should we start an entirely new show where you and I talk about Marvel stuff? <laughs> Sometime? You know what, Gus? I think Marvel stuff is kind of oversaturated. Oh! Well, they said it. We're never covering it again. <laughs> We're not doing we it. Won't Stop do asking. It. No one Don't was ask. asking. Yeah, nobody no was, was asking, asking and we won't do it. That's a win-win, really. <laughs> what is this? That's show? the real double whammy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so we're back with the diver guy in this in this in this art gallery. Uh, the one thing I did spot in the background is for some reason the nasty patty is there oh, in like a glass fun. container because hey, remember that kids? Um, <laughs> they don't. Again, it's it's a reference for people who are who are like like I said our age who aren't watching the show anymore apart from for you, content. You don't remember that um, if you don't wake up with a little bit of lower back pain. <laughs> That's the thing. It's it, it, it's one of those classic kind of brutal. Hey, remember when this show was good? Hey, old man, you got multiple chins because you're old. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the the diver directs our attention to a painting of the Krusty Krab and and calls it a portrait of greed. Um, and we see we see Mr. Krabs closing up after a long day, and he spots a a quarter rolling from the Krusty Krab down the road, and he chases after it, uh, right the way into an old house, where the quarter proceeds to jump from the floor into the slot of a payphone. Somehow, it's the black phone. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's the black Is the grabber phone. in this, <laughs> Mister? It's the crabber. The crabber. <laughs> No, no, sorry. I was really starting to like you, SpongeBob. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Fuck Patrick Doctor Who. The Crabber is the thumbnail of this the video. Crabber. The fucking Crabber. The crabber. <laughs> <laughs> and me running away Look, from him. This video is called the Crabber Five, SpongeBob Boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. Oh man. So, um, inside this house. Uh, Mr. Krabs is greeted by this old starfish who d describes it as his emporium of wonders and it's very much like a, you know, the old shopkeeper and he's got all these strange oddities around. And each one is a story. Mm. Well, the things that he pulls out to try and sell to Mr. Krabs are an anvil covered in fur and a jumper made entirely out of sausages. <laughs> Uh, and he just gives them both just nonsense names. Then they're, they're not puns. They're not, uh, you know, they're not clever wordplay. They're just, it's just a, here's a flimder ding, and it's just <laughs> this thing. So it's not. They're not even words, and it's not. There's no reason. Where did they come it. up with the concept of like an anvil-shaped object covered in fur? <laughs> like, why would that be the thing that was there? <laughs> I think Charlie was right earlier. They were tripping. They were really they were. tripping. There's no rhyme or <laughs> that reason is, to any that of is That is the guns. kind of thing that you would see when you're like, you know, just fully in the like trip zone. He offers to uh he offers to give 
Mr. Krabs, the the payphone that the quarter has just hopped into for for free, for the low, low price of free, he says. And he he delivers, again, credit where it's due, perhaps the one good joke of this episode, where he says, but beware, you know, the payphone's got a curse on it. And Mr. Krabs goes, well, how much is the curse? And the guy goes, oh, it's free, it comes with the phone. And I think that's quite I, funny. Yeah, that's kind of clever. I like that. Yeah. That's, that's all right. That is a good gag. So, uh, naturally... The next logical step that Mr. Krabs takes is to install the payphone at the Krusty Krab so that his patrons can use it to to make urgent phone calls while they eat. And he can take extra money from the phone, naturally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but here we go. And bear in mind, everything I'm about to describe happens within the space of about the same 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, um, God. You know it's going to be good. <laughs> the phone rings. Yeah. The phone rings. Mr. Krab answers it. The phone receiver is stuck into his ear... Not to his ear, sorry. His eye, by the way. Of course. <laughs> Where it would normally go, in your ear. And a haunted, like, disembodied ghost voice compels him via hypnosis to give Krabby Patties away for free. This is the black phone. <laughs> Today's the day, motherfucker! Today's the day you're gonna give them free Krabby Patties, motherfucker! That's almost literally what the dialogue is, because Krabs is just like, oh, give, give patties away for free free you also like i love clancy brown but you can really tell through his voice performance that his heart is not in this no his heart hasn't been in this for a while it's why he doesn't show up like as often as mr krabs it seems in the later seasons it's because it's just like listen guys i'm busy i got other roles to do i'm doing john wick 4 that's that's the the thing it was watching john wick 4 and seeing him as the harbinger in that and being like wow I mostly experienced this man through new Spongebob for this fucking show. (laughs) And that's a crime. So we have immediately um, after being told to give away uh, Krabby Patties for free, Spongebob, of course, sees nothing wrong with this. So instantly starts like throwing free free food at the customers and everyone's cheering and everyone's like oh yeah we we love this you know we we, you know we love mr beast burger Um, (laughs) (laughs) i'm just now picturing mr beast but it's mr crabs and it's mr crabs he gave a hundred of me customers free burger (laughs) oh my god we've gus we've got to do that video idea you have yes yeah yeah. about like doing our own mr beast thumbnails oh totally (laughs) absolutely i was just thinking a hundred fish breathe air for the first time (laughs) yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Krabs is just over the shoulder of like a fish just like staring directly at the viewer. It's so funny. <laughs> I gave a hundred drunk boat drivers their licenses back. <laughs> 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 yeah, because Mr. Krabs, is, it would all be, like, like terrible, like... I robbed a hundred orphanages. Canonically, Mr. Krabs tried to accelerate global warning, warming. There's a cartoon <laughs> that, the, that like, uh, the Spongebob, like, made back for, like, a convention on, on the topic a while ago. Oh, like, fucking insane. <laughs> all right. Back to the crab right. his black phone. Yeah. I said I put oil ring above bikini bottom. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have the exhaust pipes for all these cars hooked up to the sky to instigate the eternal summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, anyways. Uh shortly after Mr. Krabs snaps out of his trance and he tells SpongeBob to uh to he gathers he rapidly gathers up all the all the Krabby Patties, he says to SpongeBob that he has to stitch these half-eaten burgers back together Ugh. so that he can resell them, which, ew, vile. Worst! Um, Worst man! I'm 100% sure that that's someone's kink. Um, Stitching food back together. The phone rings again. Uh, Mr. Krabs answers it, and this time it compels him to give away all his money. You could tell at this point I was kind of getting like, oh, God, let it end. So my notes just say, same thing happens. So you can imagine, he's just throwing his money at people. God. Mm. If it took, like, a really dark turn, and the last one is, like, kill Squidward. Yeah, <laughs> sacrifice Squidward on an altar. Squidward is present throughout all of what is currently happening, and he witnesses all of it, and that will become important oh, in, no. a, in a short moment. No, because he doesn't he doesn't get himself involved at all. But the third call, because as we know, uh, both comedy and calls from the black th- black phone come in threes. They come um, in five in the actual black it, phone. Then... <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen that movie. Okay. It's foreshadowing for the fact that there are five grabber movies. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in this video, this is one of them. Yeah, oh, sorry, exactly. the third call. This is the fifth one. Uh, the third call tells him to give away the Krusty Krab. And at this point, you might think, oh, or you might be forgiven for thinking, oh, 
the voice on the phone sounds a bit like Plankton. What if this has all been an elaborate kind of, you know, elaborate scheme by Plankton to get his hands on the Krusty Krab, right? Because that's his whole thing, right? Yeah. Mm. Nope, Plankton is outside building a laser and says, oh yeah, this will this will blast crabs for good. And then Mr. Krabs walks up to him and hands him the deed and Plankton goes, huh, that was weird. Oh well, I win. And then still ends up shooting himself with the laser somehow. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Moriarty from Sherlock. He's like, I have no more worlds. Tonka shoots himself. Yeah, bang. I was gonna say he does like uh he does Jack Horner, but in reverse he goes, That was weird, and then he shoots himself. <laughs> Pretty much. At this point, Mr. Krabs w- once again back out of his trance, although not realizing he's handed over the, the Krusty Krab, which again will become ap- apparent as to why that's weird in a- about a few seconds. He uses a crowbar to open up the payphone and there's a tiny demon sat in there. <laughs> like <laughs> Like a little, like a, like a, he's a fish, but he's a demon. He's a fish demon. And he sat operating, operating like an old timey, like with cables kind of switchboard. (laughs) Um, They they swap places and Mr. Krabs is now sat inside the the, the payphone. Mr. Krabs becomes the phone demon now? (laughs) He does become the phone demon and the demon... It exits the phone and he borrows a quarter from Spongebob <laughs> to get the bus and then he's just free and he leaves. The reason I mentioned just a second ago that it's weird that Mr. Krabs is fine with having handed over the Krusty Krab is because Plankton is already the boss now and everyone's okay with it. No one has any qualms about it. No one has any issues with it. He sat at like the front the front till and it's like, yep, I, I own this place now. O- okay. And Squidward, who who has witnessed everything up until this point, throws the payphone in the dumpster outside? Effectively consigning his boss to do- his former boss to doom. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Uh, he's aware that Mr. Krabs is in there, but he doesn't care, and he just- I mean, Mr. Krabs is a demon now. Like, does he really deserve our consideration? <laughs> and you want to know how the episode ends, boys? That's it. <laughs> That's the ending. <laughs> There is no other conclusion other than the diver coming back and saying, oh, well, sometimes the, the cost of a free phone is much higher than you might think, and the, the, the greedy person gets left with the phone bill. Anyway, excuse me, I have to take a call. And he picks up the receiver of a payphone, and then Grandpa comes screaming towards the screen through a time vortex. <laughs> No! <laughs> because this episode's not done. What is this? Is this is this um Zack Snyder's like J- Justice League? The like the like No wait, sorry, not Zack Snyder's Justice League. Batman v Superman, where like Ezra Miller shows up and like, Batman, Bruce. I need to beat up people I mean, I need to warn you about the future. <laughs> I need to assault people in Hawaii, Batman. I need to assault innocent <laughs> couples and apprehend I need to make a minor. A terrible movie where we we drag Michael Keaton and Michael Shannon into it and they can have a competition as to who wants to be there the least. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, there's like one more of these, right, Charlie? Yeah, I'm about to get to that. Yes. This is the, the, the final in the title zone trilogy. <laughs> the wild thing about these is that both of them have ended with like effectively an irreversible status quo change where like Mr. Krabs Basically. is a demon in a phone or Sandy assimilates everyone and like goes to land forever. And like, it just feels like one of these things where it's like, finally an excuse for us to like kill the entire world in these characters that we're so sick of (laughs) gonna tell my kid this was the season finale (laughs) yeah i know i know i let you down i've been a fool to myself (laughs) the title zone concludes with the uh again the diver much like mr krabs in the previous episode getting hypnotized by a phone call and saying oh i must offer you one more story of a grandpa lost in time and space. And we get uh, the final episode, which is called A Skin Wrinkle in Time. Ew! Oh, like, which is a stupid what? title. Yeah. A skin of a wrinkle in time. You could have just said... <laughs> a skin of a wrinkle in time. <laughs> you could have just said A Wrinkle in Time. And that would be the joke, but because he's old and wrinkly. But the thing well, is... I guess that... it's because then they would have got sued by the creators of A Wrinkle in Time. Yeah, Ursula, Ursula Le Guin's, like, uh, estate would just sue them. Because <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> hey, hold on. We we open in Meteor Rest. Wrinkly, wrinkly in time. 
We uh, we open with Grandpa hurtling through the time vortex. I don't like Grandpa. He's my least favorite SpongeBob Deep Lore character. Yeah. I didn't even know there was me a Grandpa either until today, Gus. <laughs> I picked it up. And I, here's the thing: I said that only off of the working knowledge I have so far. <laughs> he has to work his way up from the bottom. He's new. <laughs> uh, trust me. Trust me. I don't like him anymore by the end of this episode. If you can even call three minutes an episode. Yeah. Sometimes at Loop Lagoon, three minutes is all we can do. Oh, no. Well, those are rookie numbers, Gus, but we'll get you up. <laughs> Go on in <laughs> seconds. Um, so, yeah, he's hurtling through the time vortex, and he's heading right towards the the painting of the pirate from the title, from the opening song. And he says, have I found the beginning of the universe? And the pirate painting starts going... Oh, yep. <laughs> and he gets, uh, he gets Vord straight away. Oh, no. he goes by the pirate painting. Yeah, he goes into the pirate oh, painting's photorealistic no, mouth no, no. and down its throat, and you see him go down its throat. And then we get a um, a recreation of the title sequence. Instead of it being SpongeBob SquarePants, it's Grandpa Star Fish. <laughs> it doesn't quite work the same way, does it? <laughs> it doesn't. But the title is all made up from old, wrinkly, withered skin Ugh. with little hairs protruding. Stop! Out of it. Why are they Who doing are this? this? SpongeBob Flesh Ball. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Long live the new flesh. <laughs> <laughs> We have such sights to show you. <laughs> no, at this point, you'd think, oh, it's a quick, it's like a, it's a cold open, it's a jump forward. We're gonna now find out why Grandpa is is lost in time. No, there's no explanation of how we got here or what's happening or when we'll ever be free. Well, you've got to stay tuned for like the Grandpa special that reveals all about. But it doesn't. It's written by Stephen <laughs> Moffat, which means that it will be uh, hints at further reveals that will never be revealed. <laughs> Fun fact: my friend actually met Stephen Moffat in person like, recently, and apparently he's very nice. And punched oh. him out. <laughs> wish I wish I could say the same for his writing. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, he's written some good stuff, but also some equally like, What a chill stuff. guy. I wish he'd stop writing. I mean, for the most part, he kind of has, <laughs> as far as I'm aware. Good on him. I, I respect <laughs> that. Dracula. <laughs> the best career decision he ever made. Oh, man. This, you might be wondering, okay, well, this is a time travel plot. What, you know, interesting eras of history is, is Grandpa going to visit? You know, are we going to actually do anything fun and interesting with this time travel? No. No. He goes to the Wild West. He goes to a Wild West era bikini bottom. And he picks up a random cowboy. Um, and, and that's he it. He picks up a cowboy. Do you know what back in the time for me? Because he's... I, I should have clarified as well. He's he's driving around on a mobility scooter. I should have mentioned this before. so mean-spirited. And there's like... And in order to make him travel in time, there's a, like, a doorway that appears. That, like, a literal... Not like a metaphysical doorway. Like, an actual door with like dials and buttons on it, but he doesn't do anything to this door. It just opens up and sort of spits him out into a, into where he's at. Do you know what would have actually been a really <laughs> funny thing they could have done that also would have saved money on animation? Literally anything This else. would be another classic only for us olds, but wouldn't it have been really funny if they just composited Grandpat into like the first episode of Spongebob? Oh yeah! That would like 1999. And he's just doing commentary and even stuff? Even, like... That would have been funny. Yeah, or even, like, compositing him over, like, you know, black and white footage of, like, World War One or something <laughs> would have been funnier. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I would have taken that one, too. God. Just have Grandpa flying over, like, the last season of Black Adam. <laughs> we have, Grandpa we have... just being among the people who were, like, gunned down in that opening scene of Saving Private Ryan in, like, D-Day. Oh, when they're God. all just, like, machine guns. <laughs> no, he, like, travels through all of the wars, like, the beginning montage of um, X-Men Origins War yeah. III. <laughs> Gran Grandpa falls out of an American airplane and lands on Hiroshima. He was, <laughs> he was the fat man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 
Batman. <laughs> the Batman. <laughs> if someone wants to make that edit, please don't don't do make it. that. Please, edit. please, please it don't. It was a real tragedy. It was terrible. Why? Is okay. I'm, just, I'm just thinking okay, this idea of like the Oppenheimer, oh. poster, but it's like Pattenheimer with Grand Pat. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> now I've become Death, the destroyer of brain cells. <laughs> I've become Death, SpongeBob. I feel like I'm stupider for having watched this. Oh, that was, no. and, and that was the title zone. Holy fucking fuck! Wow, wait, we're not. I'm not done. Oh wait, I'm what? There's done. more. Okay, there's more. So he returns to the time vortex and ends up in a uh, a tunnel of like trippy, col like bright colors because you know, gotta keep the kids entertained somehow. He goes to the Jangle Key dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. R.I.P. to anyone suffering with um, epilepsy in the audience. Hey, well, after they see this, they won't be suffering for much longer. <laughs> oh, God. Watch the title zone and slip into the sweet release of death. You just described my evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he passes through this trippy, uh, colorful Synesth tunnel. This trippy synesthesia passes... world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And passes a baby version of Grandpa that's just floating in space, but is already old because Grandpa has a beard and is very wrinkled. And this baby is just that. He passes it. He says the line, "That's a good-looking baby." Uh, it isn't. Stop that! I I don't. Don't ever say those words in that maybe, order. Maybe ever. we should look into Grandpa. We've checked the flight logs. He's been spending a lot of time in Lube Lagoon. Hey, listen, if you're a time travel, theoretically, everyone is over the age of consent. No, God. Because you're not doing that time thought. linearly. That's some proper anime maths right there. That is some, like, it's okay because she's a 4,000-year-old lolly. Never mind that that would make her the predator. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where the fuck does Grandpa go now when he escapes the jangling key dimension? No, well, he's back to the time vortex, and he's still got the rando cowboy with him. <laughs> Luckily, a, a seahorse just appears. Uh, there was one in the previous scene. It didn't follow them through into the time vortex. It's just there. Let's do um, the the time rando war. hops on, <laughs> hops on the. <laughs> Hoping his next leap will be my next leap off the third floor. <laughs> Not if I get there first, Gus. <laughs> I'll race you. <ya. laughs> I'll race you down. Yeah, Gus and Charlie are just fucking Hawkeye and Black Widow racing to see who can jump <laughs> off that fucking cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I look better in the skin tight suit, personally. I think. Okay, okay, then you can go. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what the fuck does Grandpa do? Well, this is a three-minute short. This, so this is we're getting to the end. Uh, so the the random cowboy hops on the seahorse. Uh, and just leaves. He's gone. Uh, then Grandpa arrives back home. And it's all normal, except everyone, including Patrick, is a fly. Um, they're all flies. <laughs> it's it, And he goes, ah, well, it's close enough to normal. It he turns really on the TV isn't. and the diver, the diver is on the TV and he goes, well, we've left things a little weird, but that's how we like it. And then he reaches out of the TV and turns the dial off, and Grandpa goes, Hey, I was watching that. See, what's so annoying is that they the could end. have done a, full, a fun full circle thing and had Grandpa's meddling in time be why they're all robots in the first one. Yeah! They could have done Henry, but that would have required a modicum of creativity. And what's so annoying about it as well is they even set themselves up for having that scene in Welcome to Binary Bottom where Grandpa briefly popped in. So what was what was any of this? Nothing. It was nothing. This is honestly the big problem of what happens when your brand gets big enough that you don't need to hold yourself to a standard anymore. Because the logic is, it's SpongeBob. Kids will just watch it. Yeah. Which is a shit attitude, by the way, to have. People will always kind of jump to the argument of like, oh, well, it's a kid's show. It doesn't matter. Some of the most, like, entertaining accessible and like well thought out storytelling has been done through children's entertainment to, you know maybe it's an unfair comparison but like gravity falls is for all intents and purposes a kids show the other thing about spongebob like modern spongebob is that i don't even really buy that it's a kids show like it is a show that kids will watch but like it's constructed in such a way that like the buzz is meant to be from like adults who are like sick and stupid <laughs> 
and still watching it. <laughs> but when you're when you're sick, you're inclined to believe that your day can't get much worse. But if Listen, you're tuning into this, there is guys, no past. <laughs> there is no future. The present is a joke. That's SpongeBob. There's only Grandpat. There is only Grandpat <laughs> screaming his way through all of it. Exactly. Going off to Loop Lagoon. We're not allowed to give specific examples because of NDAs, but the funny thing <laughs> is, everyone in uh, this show right now, as we say in our other shows, we're all professional writers, and frankly, a yeah. lot of what we do is uh, writing in kids' entertainment, and frankly, yeah. we put a lot more effort in. <laughs> yeah, no, that I, I would say that that's 100% I mean, you say the that, case. Henry. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. We don't derail Sorry. these episodes into, like, complete, like, you know, yeah. nonsense, like, fetish, loop lagoon, end of the world <laughs> scenarios. No, exactly. You know, we, like, for whatever whatever we do in that avenue, we are trying to make something that, like, you know, the kids will actually l enjoy, you know? And engage um, exactly. with. Exactly, that will at least be entertaining yeah. Yeah. and, yeah, engaging, you're right. Not just, like, throwing random crap there and being like, well, that's a... Th that's my that's my work done for the day. Exactly, exactly. You know, it's gotta there's gotta be a higher threshold than like, you know, Joker shits in balloons and throws them at Elsa and Spider Man. <laughs> Jared Leto's Jesus had a rough Christ, time a since uh, thirty seconds to Mars not boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, listen, listen, there's method acting and then there's meth acting. Yeah, that meth, meth head acting. acting, yeah. Yeah. Which is a line I wrote down a long while ago that I wanted to use in something and never did. Well, now we've blown it here. Just kidding, you can still use it. Gus, what was your second episode? Your, are you fuckers ready for bitty sitting? Wait, what? No. Bitty sitting. Beast sitting? Biddy sitting. Keep hearing titty sitting. Biddy, I don't want to believe bid, that's what you listen, said. Listen, it's called biddy sitting. Have you ever heard biddy of the term? Sitting. Oh, biddy. An like old, old biddy? Oh, like an old person. Yes, yes, biddy sitting. Gotcha. For context, we record this together on Discord. Uh, people at home. It, yeah. Charlie and I aren't both just like aggressively hard of hearing. Is that sometimes Discord will like <laughs> lose the first syllable. Of of a thing someone's trying to say. It's it's also not an especially intuitive title, Biddy Sitting, you know? No, it's so, a terrible like uh, outside of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, I'm not sure that I need the like SpongeBob and Patrick Elder Care episode, which is what I assume this is. Yeah. This episode does not waste any time at all. Second one, you see SpongeBob putting the finishing touches on a like babysitting service sign for like him and Patrick. That is Zooms out and Squidward's like, you two are doing a babysitting service? You've heard of Sam and Cat. Get ready for Sponge and Pat. <laughs> yeah. Like, like actually, the, the thing is, like, Squidward immediately is like, no, I reject the premise of this episode. I do not <laughs> like this. This is a bad idea. And SpongeBob and Patrick, in response, um immediately infantilize him? Oh, God. Oh, he's Squid Baby again. We're oh, back to Oh, no, this zone. is... Oh, no. So... This is an adult baby thing. So we've already done that episode. Instead, we get this, like, SpongeBob and Patrick put, like, uh, like baby powder on him. They put him in a diaper. They give him a little baby hat. They put a pacifier in his mouth. Oh. I hate this. This is so... He behaves like a baby for half a minute, and then he's like, ah, wait a minute. What have you done to me? Ah! And he's, like, freaked oh, out I by it. This. I hate... I'm freaked out by it. And if you're getting off to this, I hate you. <laughs> I'm not in support of kink shaming except from this one instance because it's making me uncomfy. Oh, go poop in your diaper over it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll wank to it. What are you going to do? Piss yourself? Yeah, go down to Loop Lagoon and have a wank over it as you shit in your diaper. <laughs> I do not know how SpongeBob episodes, SpongeBob Boys episodes, are monetized. I do not know how. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> so Little anyway, bit of Christmas through magic. magic, guys. So anyway, it's it's horrible. That's literally what I wrote down in the notes. They babify Squidward, and it's horrible. Just the word babify is horrible. Squidward leaves the episode because he's like, "No, fuck this. I'm I'm done. <laughs> I'm I'm done. I'm done." And he just goes. Imagine, imagine Roger Bumpers <laughs> looking at this week's script and being like. Oh, baby noises again, huh? So you only need me in the vocal booth for like one or two lines, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, and one so... or two lines. Oh, some sound. So anyway, like SpongeBob and Patrick have their baby thing, and like from across the street, 
and we never we never see across the street of SpongeBob Patrick and uh, Squidward's houses, but we do this time across the street. A lady who looks weirdly like like a Rule sixty three Nicholas Withers comes out of her house. <laughs> oh God, no! And is just like. It's just like, oh, come and watch my baby. Nicola with us. Yeah. So, so SpongeBob and Patrick, we've gotten that fan art, and we should get more. So, um, yeah. SpongeBob and Patrick roll up, and like, uh, Patrick's like, we sit on babies, and SpongeBob goes, not literally, and Patrick goes, yeah, not in Italy. <laughs> Oh, Patrick God. is quickly closing his laptop that has a link to the like square pa- <laughs> Squarespace page for his like crush fetish website he's making. To to re to reiterate what I said earlier, check this starfish's hard drive. Yeah, Mr. Star, you're taking a lot of trips to Lube Lagoon these days. Pat- Patrick <laughs> in his big heels from the SpongeBob movie just steps on Gary. <laughs> oh no! Oh, God, <laughs> now listen, boys. No, there's nothing to listen to. I'll half joke about being stepped on and uh, for as uh, for <laughs> till the uh, till the end of the day. What are you doing? Turn but turn listen. your hat backwards. Like turn the chair backwards. Sit. Hey, being stepped on if you're a person is fine. Don't step on animals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you said it better than I could. Don't, don't don't step on animals. They don't want that. They've never wanted yeah. that. Evolutionarily, they're predisposed to not want that. We yeah. humans, we're fucking freaks. We love to be stepped on, but not animals. Don't do you that. Step on step on consenting adults only, for the love of exactly. God. Exactly. And if they if they consent harder, step on them especially harder. Especially if that consenting adult is me, <laughs> and especially if you are Rhea Ripley. Please, for the love of God, reply. If you would if you would <laughs> step on Charlie and or if you're Rita Ripley, leave a comment down below with uh, with how hard oh you God, would you're step Rhea on Ripley, Charlie. Please leave a comment down below. <laughs> She's actually been a SpongeBob Boys fan for years. We have to keep saying no, Rhea, you can't <laughs> come on. We have we're fully booked. We're fully lubed. Rhea, I'd give up my spot for you. So they go into this woman's house and she has a bunch of babies in the house. And Patrick goes, these toddlers are no match for my toddler style. And he whips out, like, formula bottle nunchucks and does, like, a bunch of stupid nunchuck, like, sound effects and, like, moves for, like, a minute. It's very funny, you guys. Uh, um, it sounds it, yeah. I was so worried you were going to say these toddlers are no hilarious. match for my toddler style, and he immediately sits on one. <laughs> <laughs> get owned he, get owned child you can't move get owned baby. he immediately he immediately <laughs> lets them die of neglect <laughs> like old like the old beach where it's just like it died of neglect it was five seconds but it died fun fact fun little fun little tangent and anecdote um <laughs> old just came to the uk netflix and it came up on my when i opened up netflix the other day and i immediately took a photo of it and sent it to meg and was like meg look what just came up on Netflix. I'm howling. I have to watch it. I have to know about the beach that makes you all. Did you so, watch it in the end? I'm gonna watch Good. it. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, please tell me how how you feel about old. SpongeBob when you watch is the it. show that makes me feel old. Okay, so they they montage through stuff with the babies. One of the things is Patrick makes horrible faces at them to make them laugh, and I do mean oh. horrible, like you know, like freeze face <laughs> level stuff. Oh no. Who are you calling Pinhead? Lovely. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Um, SpongeBob also, and this is this is one of those like moments of like, oh, I kind of like how this is part of his characterization. SpongeBob does like a like like he puts the babies on on like a like a grill shaped bed, and then he does like a spatula flips them over to change their diapers. Okay, that's, that's funny, that's... but also like sinister. Like, don't don't, don't yeah. be putting babies on a grill shaped bed <laughs> unless you're like a witch from a fairy tale. Again, to 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 quote a Meg thing, it loudly implies cannibalism. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's the thing, though. I give this sequence a pass because at no point do we see like a big, heavy, stinky diapy with stink lines coming off heavy, stinky. You know, diapy. you're right because even God. Good SpongeBob was not immune to that. Famously in Rockaboy by Valve. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Where diapers had taken over the walls and like outside of the house. Well, weird aside, something I just noticed. SpongeBob has made many like a poopy diaper joke, but the funny thing is, I'm not sure if they've ever made a fart joke. They they have to. Have they've done. done that in Suds after this many years. They've done that in Suds where remember. like he had bubbles, he had bubbles in his like uh, underpants that made it look like he had two like fucking 
thick ass cheeks, and then they like popped. <laughs> But he didn't actually fart, though, did he? No, you're right. That was a side effect of the, the suds. I guess fart jokes are difficult to do underwater. Fart jokes are just worse in cartoons than in live action. There isn't that sense of, like, oh, that's embarrassing and that's why it's funny. Rather than, like, a total drama or anything. It's like, oh, the stinky, stinky clouds. I suck it all up into my nose. And if you can think of a good fart joke... <laughs> Let us know in the fart comments, down or if you comments. have a fart thing. Fart yourself to death in the comments. Just type fart in the comments. We're putting in as much effort as the Spongebob writers are at this point. So anyway, this first job goes so well, the woman is so happy with Spongebob and Patrick's service that they go down the street, they're going all over Bikini Bottom, they're advertising their, like, you know, babysitting service. Here's where the episode takes a turn that it was in the back of my mind, like when I heard the title of this, and I was like, there's no way that this is actually what the episode is, right? But it was there subconsciously as an OG SpongeBob fan. They 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 are going door to door, and a woman steps out and goes, Oh, oh thank you. Can can you can you go in here? And and like I could use your services, because I could use a free day. And SpongeBob and Patrick are like, <gasps> sure. And so the the woman who then, like, hires them and then leaves to go off on her own bore a striking resemblance to the woman from Chocolate, Chocolate with, with nuts. nuts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what? So, so I looked at that and, like, watched her go as SpongeBob and Patrick go into the house and they're looking for the baby. And I was filled with this, like, overwhelming sense of impending doom. Like, this just feeling of, like, no, 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 this sur surely this cannot... Like, that must be a coincidence that they reuse that character design. It can't be that the premise of the episode is is actually what I think it is. And then, sure enough, they find a certain rocking chair, Henry, <sighs> and they turn it around, and none other than the wrinkled husk of, like, a spinal cord in head that is this character is sitting in the chair. And it's the, it's the, it's the chocolate... They're selling chocolate! Hold on, hold on. You mean to tell me that Diane Feinstein's in this episode? I killed them. I killed them both. I'm so sorry. Now you're the SpongeBob boy. <laughs> I have to. I, I I have to very briefly wrap, Ooh. right? Because go, this is another go, great example. Go, go, fucking go, go off, no, King. No, that's the, that's the thing. This is a this is a comically. Um, oh, I hear Buffy. What's that gonna work? The beef. Hey Meg, we're recording There's Spang Bam Bims. You can game. Spin bing dum bing ding. Bing bab. Spin bag. Blah bing bob bad. So here's the thing that fucking gets me, right? It's the if if the original context. That character served a very specific joke purpose. It was SpongeBob and Patrick trying to be like smooth, greasy door to door salesmen, talk to an old woman and do the classic, like, hey, is your mother home? As a like, oh, you look young, I'm charming you. And the joke is, yeah, mm. her mother is actually home and she is a positively ancient crone. And that is a character that was so specifically made to build on that joke that bringing her back is pointless. Yes. Yes, exactly. How many callbacks in modern SpongeBob might not be callbacks to old SpongeBob, but may in fact be callbacks to modern memes about old SpongeBob? You're so right, though. Because it's a show that lives so much in meme culture. Like, that's what I think it is. I think it's, like, their way to grasp for relevance with the modern audience is like, hey, this is like an image macro you saw on Instagram, right? But that's the thing. This is so, like, uncanny and wrong because, like, SpongeBob and Patrick should have recognized the lady at the front door and should also recognize this because canonically... Of they should have rec recognized her. She's U.S. Senator Diane oh, Feinstein. <laughs> but in Chocolate with Nuts, it ended with them going on a memorable double date with these two ladies. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, these are their old flames. They, they should absolutely remember. And, and it, old flames is uh, like kind of appropriate because it feels like they'd be very flammable for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of that joke from uh, a series of unfortunate events. The like, oh yes, I knew her. Remarkable woman, flammable. They're here with older, older lady, and she's animated terribly. Her design is not as like wrinkly and like dusty as it used to be. It's just kind of like they half-assed it. Aww. You know, they they nickname her Prunes uh, because they're like, oh, you're all gross oh, and God. pruny, baby Prunes. Oh, they're infantilizing the old woman too, and she hates it. She's like, she's like, stop it, you, 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 stop it, you idiots! I hate it. So this is SpongeBob and Patrick do elder abuse. Yeah, I was gonna say this is the elder abuse episode. Well, here's the thing: she abuses them right back because Patrick takes out some blocks for her to play with, and she goes like, "I'll build something." Smash cut to SpongeBob and Patrick in a block prison where SpongeBob is playing a harmonica. I'm sorry, I feel like I was just punched in the face. What happened? So SpongeBob <laughs> is inside of a, uh, a, a, like, a prison built out of wooden blocks, and he and Patrick are, like, in there, and they're wondering what happened to the baby. So they break out of the jail, and, like, SpongeBob goes, the best part of playing prison is jailbreak! And Patrick's like, jailbreak! And they smash through the walls. They, like, go through the house, look for um, baby prunes, <laughs> a.k.a., you know, our beloved, like, <laughs> chocolate with nuts mother. They find her, and they staple oh, her into the blanket of a stroller. Oh. And she's, like, trying to, like, get out. The whole time, she's like, ah, get away from me! Stop touching! Uh. Also, not the same voice actor. It's just um, Tom Kenny putting on a voice. To pretend to be the, the old voice. I hate voice. how they'll try to like bring back these iconic things and not put in any of the effort that it's made so the original lazy. this like special thing. I was so struck by the audacity of this episode, and I was just like, this is just pointless. I'm watching like I might as well be watching my leg. Parody of a parody of what a SpongeBob episode should be. And SpongeBob says, like, I'm gonna go get like diapers or some baby shit. I don't know. He says he's gonna go upstairs. <laughs> to the bathroom and Patrick says, okay, you do that. I'm just going to space out. And he like, his eyes roll back in his head and Patrick's just out of commission. <laughs> Patrick <laughs> reveals her. his deadlights to the old woman. SpongeBob goes upstairs and finds like dentures and like, you know, just all this like old person stuff, but no diapers. And he finds like a card that says like, congratulations to your mother on like her 133rd birthday. And SpongeBob like panics. He's like, oh, that's not a baby. That's an old lady lady like it's some kind of like 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 she's like a gremlin that he fed after the allotted time this, this is like do you know that movie the boy where it's like oh we'll hire you and you're like babysit this doll but there's, it's actually like a, an adult man in the walls sorry spoilers for the boy um, but, <laughs> it, was, um... it was my least favorite <laughs> the boys prequel <laughs> For the boys, there was the boy. the boy. While SpongeBob is trying to get back down the stairs to Patrick, um, Prunes oh takes advantage of Patrick spacing out and like gets him to like open the door by like him like dissociating and thinking she's like a dog that needs to be let outside. Yeah. it doesn't make any sense in context, and it makes less sense explaining it here. But that's what happens. So she goes off. Out into the world, the boys try to, like, track her down and- Oh my god, they're going after Homelander. Yeah. <laughs> Sponge Lander. It's Ocean Man, like the song told us! We Ocean want... Lander! Ocean Man, take me by the hand! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gaze in wonder at the open land. The open la the open blank land, the barren landscape where good Spongebob episode ideas once were. <laughs> The desecrated fucking glass plane oh that occurred after they fucking nuked the integrity of the show. This is where the sandwich lives. <laughs> yeah, it's where the sandwich lives. So, so SpongeBob and Patrick, like, they're trying to find, like, where would an old lady go? So they go to a sewing circle, and there's a bunch of old women who just kind of, like, wipe them down with handkerchiefs because they're like, ooh, you've got schmutz on you. And they start wiping Patrick and SpongeBob down who hold each other, and they're, like, horrified. I don't mean to corrupt everything that's... I don't mean to... I don't mean to corrupt things or <laughs> yeah. be like... Everything in this show feels like that. Here's the thing, Charlie. That may be. And we may all have kinks. But none can be as 
forward with their kinks as Spongebob writers writing late season Spongebob. Yeah. And it's the worst of all because they're doing it at kids. You would think that if the Republican Party was actually concerned about, like, you know, the, the children of America, they wouldn't be marrying them and then blaming trans people for God child endangerment. Damn. They'd be railing against SpongeBob. Fuck them, Gus. I Shots love it. I'm here fire. for it. Where, where the fuck does Pruny go? So Pruny went off to go do extreme things, TM, TM. By that, I mean jump out of helicopters, surf on lava waves, like go to a boxing arena and just like because get it i don't get this characterization because like the the version of her in chocolate with nuts <laughs> didn't strike me as like oh if she only, didn't even like, like chocolate she hated it she even said as much she doesn't like fun i don't know why she's out of yeah. the house sweet sweet chocolate I always hated it. Also, the also she has like perfect hearing in this That's episode. Sweet. She understands what everybody's saying all the time. They, <laughs> she just fakes it to do benefit. But that's for the thing; they don't even fully remember. They don't even fully remember <laughs> their own doing bits. It for years. That they're like riffing on. It's just the meme. It's just the hey, remember the meme? Remember the meme that this that this old dead thing that we had in. <laughs> Not dead, sorry, but like... Listen, we at Spongebob team can't be expected to fully watch the old episodes. We can only watch the clips on YouTube that people put in their Spongebob yeah, poop exactly. compilations. <laughs> yeah. The show could be renamed Spongebob Poop. Don't, because then they'd attract some real freaks. Not like us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need to get the poop on the robots. Listen, they finally catch up with, with prunes at like a like big Coliseum boxing arena and she beats one of, like, you know, like, a guy who would look like he would be in the Salty Spittoon. She beats him with, like, a boxing glove, which she's wearing on her weird spine. It doesn't, it's fucking weird. And Spongebob and Patrick I are like, Pr like, prunes, you gotta come back with us. We, we're responsible for you. And she's like, you humiliated me. And she starts she's beating right. the shit out of both of them. And it's true. They deserve this beating for what they did with Squidward in the first, like, minute of this episode. And for all the elder abuse. So, okay, so she beats their ass so hard that she gets tired and falls asleep. <laughs> and that's how the conflict is <laughs> resolved. And SpongeBob and Patrick take prunes, they put her back in, like, her wheelchair, and they're wheeling her home. And SpongeBob's like, oh, I guess we need to change Prunes' diaper. And Patrick goes, actually, that was me. No. He does. No. They couldn't resist getting one more in. Patrick Just... shit himself. Why not? And that was Biddy sitting. Or should I say, shitty shitting. I'm doing a little AVGN. <laughs> little AVGN reference in 2023. This is like a big dump from a buffalo's <laughs> This anus. looks like, this is a, this is a gorilla <laughs> asshole smeared into my chest. Chocolate milk that I fucking drank with diarrhea dicks. Jingle all the way can jingle all the way to hell. <laughs> Last episode of the day. Hey. Take us home, Henry. The title. This is season 11, episode 11. The title is Don't Feed the Clowns. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like, oh, no. What is this? Does uh, d does that make you feel nervous? Yeah, like a little. So a little bit. A little bit. More than a little bit, actually. So we open on an establishing shot of a circus. On the inside, the, the they missed such a good joke because there are these like huge fucked up looking snails, <laughs> um, moving around on like big beach balls. And one of them, and they're meant to be like the elephants, like circus elephants, and one of them like vomits goo uh, onto SpongeBob and Patrick in the crowd who are eating. Straight out of the gate. Amazing. Isn't them already pissed off because I'm like, dude, elephant seal. It yeah, was right wait, are you, there. do you think that they're going for like lions and tigers? Like, is that why they're big snails? No, because they're meant to look like elephants. That's the visual language. That's so bizarre. That's ah. so weird. This show was at its best, but it was being actively made by a marine biologist. Yeah, here's the thing, though. Yeah. I mean, I find this to actually be, like, you know, an interesting beginning to the episode because it's an actual circus rather than a fumigation tent. I mean, apart from the vomit. <laughs> but it's about to get really weird. Oh, the vomit wasn't the weird part? Lovely. No, it isn't. It, it isn't. It just objectively isn't. Wait for it. It gets really It just ends up becoming weird. no shirt, no circus. Like, the whole time that was a real episode, I just didn't even... Yeah, your, your face yeah. <laughs> so funny. So 
So SpongeBob and Patrick, they say out loud together, I heart the circus. Okay. And I'm like, who says that? Say I love that. Don't say yeah. heart Yeah, out no, you loud. go to New York City and the, you go, I heart New York, and they'll just beat your ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that true. happened to me, but then again, I was also wearing a Red Sox cap. <laughs> oh no, Gus. <laughs> so we then cut, there are two ringmasters in this circus. One kind of big, like almost square fish, and one really skinny fish. Both dressed as ringmasters, and the big ringmaster grabs the skinny ringmaster by the ankles and uses him as a bullwhip to, like, whoosh, the, like, big elephant snails. Out Why of the, the building? It, the, the, the answer is because it's somebody's fetish. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, oh, but you, know, like, you know, like a lion oh, tamer. No, the lion tamer, right. like a chair and a whip. Yeah, the human whip. But then they're like, oh, is everybody ready for the clowns? I can't be. I'm contractually obligated to Send not be ready. The clowns. <laughs> a clown car comes in, all the clowns pile out, and the thing is, these clowns are not fish. Wait, what? What do you mean by that? Like, Henry, what do you mean by that? <laughs> I mean, are they drowning? I mean, they are human clowns. They're real but, actual but even clowns. That, Wait, even they're not that, even to, clown to say fish? Human cl like, like Big Top Burger? They're, they're just actual clowns? The thing is, Charlie, wait for it. So, Because here's the thing, what I was going to say as well, they're human clowns, but to call them human clowns is a bit of a misnomer. The clowns all pile out and they start doing their shtick and the ringmaster whips them into action with his co-ringmaster and they start doing like different stuff <laughs> and they're like, you know, these these are wild clowns straight from their natural in habitat in the slapstick fields. What? What? Wait, do they say that? Yeah. Actual line. What is going and on? Why would this... And and, and, no, and SpongeBob, wait. SpongeBob is like, oh, you know, I'd love to see the clowns. And Patrick's like, oh, you have to be careful. Clowns can be unpredictable. They might chew off your feet. Ah, uh, oh, this is so many. But also, at once. but also, this, this, like, this is so much lore all at once. Like the clowns are like this, dangerous. This is why I messaged into the group yeah, chat. Actually, this episode has weird lore. <laughs> it does. Actually, that is, you're that's right. bizarre. Here's the thing. Some, like, cake or something is thrown this. into it, and all of the clowns start eating it. Oh, and the clowns don't talk, by the way. They just make, like, hey, ah, uh, type oh, noises. No. Like Howie Mandel, Ooh, Mogwai that. stuff. I hate that. Like, some food is thrown to them, they start eating it, but this one, the littlest of the clowns, doesn't get any food. And, like, SpongeBob tries to throw some in, and the ringmaster is like, don't feed the clowns! And Patrick cautions him against it as well, saying that it could provoke the clowns. In the end, the clowns do, like, this big act where they all, like, end up crashing and piling up and are, like, carried into an ambulance. And Spongebob is like, oh, I want to go backstage and meet the clowns, despite Patrick's reservations. They're all in, like, a clown enclosure. Like, they, they act like dogs, what? kind of. What is this? You've hit the kink, mother. I just... Henry. <laughs> It's like, I don't even, yeah, it's just like, it's clowns, it's like puppy play, it's, it's. And they it's live mess, in like a, like fucking... they live in a clown, like you can go and see the, the, the like weird, perverse, like sex clown creatures from their clown. Okay, you, you, you're maybe extrapolating a little bit there. Listen, you just, but... you know, you just, you know, you go like, you know, once a month and like, they don't, <laughs> the they don't like... ask your name. You just kind of like, you know, say like, listen, I'm They just... let you see the sexy, yeah, they, sexy the very The hot, they let you, you know, no accountability at <laughs> all and you're just in there and you're in the clussy. Did you just say the clussy? I said a lot of things. <laughs> Did you just listen, say Listen, I said a lot clussy. of things. So anyway, so SpongeBob tries to feed the little clown again, and the ringmaster, in like a rage, his face gets real close to the camera, yells, "Don't feed the clowns!" <laughs> um, He's SpongeBob saying it leaves, to us, the viewer. Yeah, and then yeah. the entire circus packs up while SpongeBob and Patrick aren't there into the one little clown car and drives away, but the small clown is left behind. And is behaving okay. like a frightened, lost animal. Oh no, no! Walk away! Walk and, away, boys! And don't adopt and the clown. SpongeBob returns with a 
SpongeBob returns with a bag of food saying, like, I don't care what that mean ringmaster says. I'm going to make sure the little clown gets his food. And SpongeBob finds the like frightened little clown who kind of defensively squirts water in his face out of his little clown flower. Uh, don't say little clown flower and <laughs> squirts in his face. Was it defensive or was he marking his territory? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, SpongeBob drinks it. Make of that what you will. SpongeBob ah! goes, oh, you're going to squirt at me with your little clown flower? <laughs> um... well, it's, it's one of those things that it's kind of funny because in an older episode, they maybe would have acknowledged that SpongeBob is like a sponge and have him like puff up a bit rather than needing to drink it. SpongeBob is no longer the thing that he his name says he is. He's just a vehicle for the the writer's own. No, that's the thing. This is like weird clown episode. It doesn't even matter that SpongeBob and Patrick. What matters is that there are clowns and like clown biology. Kenku Cross wrote this episode. He's talking. He's he's like <laughs> defining clowns as this like species. Yeah, no, no clowns. Clowns are a species in this episode. Don't but like I also that. like how you're you're so right, Gus, because wasn't one of the monster girls named like it was like the word for a female ninja? Ko- Konoichi, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Konoichi, thank you. And it was like, yeah, what are they? Just like fucking plumber monster girls, clown monster girls? Apparently yeah, they're all. Exactly. And and they're in SpongeBob. So here's the thing. SpongeBob is like, I'll take you in and I'll find a way to like rehabilitate you into our society. And I did it in my society. Oh, but, um, oh no. A clown Charlie. in a society? Henry. Henry. <laughs> yes, Joker. That doesn't end well. That no, doesn't end well. Henry. There. You know how that ends, society, right? society abandons them and treats them like trash. You get what you fucking deserve. But, and, and to be fair, that's kind of the plot of the episode, but I don't want to spoil too much. Fuck anyway, me. so... They're looking around, like, what is a job you can do, little clown? None! He's crazy! He's a clown! Right. He can't <laughs> Which, fit in! incidentally, is is what the, like, high school job officer asked to me <laughs> when, they, when I went in for career day. <laughs> what can you do for a job, little clown? What can you do? <laughs> a career in yeah. writing, perchance. <laughs> you seem like an expert in talking shit. Have you considered putting it on paper? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should just maybe you should just use but, a lot of words a lot forever. No, the the clown, however, does not become a writer. In fact, <laughs> they um they first find an unmanned hot dog stand. <laughs> <laughs> and they just steal it. No one will ever know. That's the level of degeneracy we're on right now. <laughs> they just start to work. They steal there. someone else's livelihood. No, they do. They do. The clowns are stealing our jobs. <laughs> the clowns are stealing their jobs. We need to build a wall to keep out the clowns. Listen, when the slapstick fields send their clowns, they're not sending their best. I don't even want to. Get, I'm not following this up. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. And 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 SpongeBob is like. I will show you, little clown, how to make the perfect hot dog. Ew. <laughs> whoa, whoa. I don't whoa. like that. He I don't like that whoa. very much. <laughs> he, he puts, like, again, gets the bun. You start at Louvre Lagoon. Yeah, you start reaches at into the, like, deep fat fryer with, like, some tongs. Puts the hot dog in, oh, that's little squirt of mustard, it. little squirt of ketchup, and a bit of relish on top. And the relish spells out the word fun. Very squirt heavy episode. It is. So then a bunch a of people a bunch of people turn up. And SpongeBob says to the little clown, It's your turn now. And the clown just with his hand reaches in. <laughs> to the deep fat fryer oh. and pulls out a, a fistful of hot dogs. Incidentally, my favorite Sergio Leone movie. Um, <laughs> and and he, <laughs> that's a stupid joke. <laughs> No, no, you know what? That, that Don't did you not dare. deserve that joke. You no. dare okay, say that was a bad joke. Here's the thing, Henry. We have been listening to, like, Spongebob material for, like, like the last, like, 20 minutes or so. The idea of, like, an actual joke hitting our ears from a comedy writer is, like, it's like water in a desert. You you do not get to, like, be like, oh, yeah. come on, that was weak. It's like it's, it's like it's saving us from dehydration in the hot sun of terrible... Yeah. Like, like, shoehorn <laughs> comedy. Fair, fair. Anyway, but, but, but the clown notices that his hand is burning, screams and throws them, causing, there are three fish there, causing the hot dogs to stick into their eyes. So each <laughs> eye socket has no. a hot dog sticking no. out of it. Why is that always a thing in, like, cartoons? No, hot I mean, dog in the maybe eye. Maybe it's more prevalent now. 
but like not 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 hot dog, but like specifically uh, like foreign objects stabbing into the eye, and the eye being like soft matter that's just like and the eye just takes it i, I think that's it. been around forever the like the like i like from the early looney tunes days i can think of like moments where like the eye just like gets like weird dumb things attached to it you know well i'm thinking of that fucking hilarious joke in nacho libre when he just throws the fucking corn <laughs> into that yeah. guy's eye Gets and it's like a perfectly eye. cut scream <laughs> just the ah yeah. <laughs> So it's good. So true. Anyway, so but then yeah. as they all scream, he squirts hot like he squirts mustard Not into again. their mouths and they all run away screaming. At this point, a a Because he didn't ask. like a huge dude who is the actual owner of the hot dog stand shows up <laughs> and I can't remember if he yelled my hot dogs or my wieners. It's Bill Fagerbakey, the voice of Patrick doing it. Yeah. But he grabs SpongeBob and the clown, smushes them into like sausage shapes, squishes them into a bun, and then throws it. Ew! Okay. Why does this man have that kind of freakish control over like the flesh of others? <laughs> Nano machine, son. <laughs> Nano machine, son. <laughs> He said it her own I want to create a country where every man has his own hot dog stand, squirts his own mustard. Bro, are you high? Let me check. Yes, high on clown squirt. No. I made hot dogs in college. Could have gone pro. If I hadn't joined the Navy. We're making the mother of all hot dogs here, Jack. Cut <laughs> Fred over every wiener. There we go. There we go. I was searching for a good I'm one. I found it. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> I've murdered Gus multiple oh, times no. this episode. Aren't you glad this? Aren't you glad that I came to join? I could break a Krabby Patty in half with my bare hand. Comment down below if you're glad that Charlie's here. Yes, please. You do. fucking better be. All right. Anyway, so SpongeBob is like, you know, I think maybe that you, like, people aren't hiring you because of like your inherent like clowniness. Maybe we could, we can like spruce you up a little bit. SpongeBob gets like a business suit for him, styles his like clown hair in a less business way, and gives him a like fake mustache, and then takes him to this big ominous looking building, which just has a sign on it saying "Businessman Wanted." What? And what? And and it's and Sp I want to imagine in this in this like brief uh, makeover scene as well. Like I want to imagine there's a moment that didn't that maybe got cut where um it's just like the movie clown where he has the clown yeah. nose that's kind of growing as like a it's like a skin condition and he tries to like pull it off his original nose but can't because it's like it's just part no, of but him. But here's the thing: it is part of him. SpongeBob can't take yeah. any of his clown elements off. He can only style it. it he's it makes he's me trying think to he's of... trying to like paint over the inherent clown of this clown being yeah. with like the the uh, affects of the business world, and it will not take because oh, no. inherently this clown is a different being. It is other. It's from another realm. It it's from a realm where the chaos dragon is. It's in the slapstick fields. It's an ingenious allusion to uh, Charlie Chaplin's iconic movie Modern Times. <laughs> no, actually, kind of though. <laughs> yeah, kind of. You're not wrong. But yeah. anyway, weirdly, slight aside, do you remember the 2016 clown epidemic? And I'm not talking about the election. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> the, no, uh... Good joke, good joke, but also I remember it. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> it, was, it was full of clowns, but none of them were fun. <laughs> this has been our mostly political episode of SpongeBob. <laughs> We call that Henry in, in the biz, we call that the Charlie effect. Yeah, it's true. But anyway, so... <laughs> Just make everything so, but, around me too political. But during, <laughs> during the, 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 like, clown epidemic, there was this one thing where some, like, town sheriff was interviewed, and, like, th this quote he said has stuck with me forever, where he said, we don't know if these are clowns or people dressed as clowns. <laughs> <laughs> and really, what is the difference no, exactly what is the difference? Uh, Spongebob goes, uh, Spongebob <laughs> sends him in and is like, good luck, little clown. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, Mr. Little Clown, as he goes oh, in. Oh, oh, 
the plot of this episode is so weird because it feels like SpongeBob is reckoning with the responsibility of bringing what is effectively coded as a wild animal into like the modern world with its like no, you know dude, genuine that's the thing. responsibilities. It, 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 it just occurred to yeah. me that this feels like the episode where they have a seahorse, but for perverts. <laughs> that is like literally like modern SpongeBob. It's like it's like this old episode, <laughs> but for perverts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All these episodes are written by Jeremy Fragrance because he's just like, I want to write SpongeBob and have sex! No, no, <laughs> it's, it's exactly like that. And the, the show glows. No, Jeremy Fragrance is way too vanilla. Yeah, no, it's the, true. The kind of shit that's <laughs> ending up in these episodes. He should be in jail. B- by his own allegation. He, al- Yeah, he alleged himself. Self-allegedly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeremy Fragrance is allegedly a rapist. Who made the allegation? Jeremy Fragrance. <laughs> but, um... Source. Source Jeremy Fragrance. And that Fragrance. was his mistake. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's this bit in in the, the TV show Glow that Addison got me to watch that's really good. Um, where they're like in universe trying to like make and pitch this wrestling show uh, that is like all women wrestlers. And the... Uh, the guy who is like the director of it, Sam, who is pitching it to this network executive, um, is saying, you know, it's kind of like porn. And it's like, oh, well, this will be going on like a morning slot for kids. It's like, yeah, exactly. It's porn you can watch with your kids. Finally. Oh my and that's, God. that's what modern That is SpongeBob modern SpongeBob. Is. No, you're right. You nailed it. That is where it oh, fits into wow. the market. And speaking of fits into the market, how does this clown adapt to the business world with all the businessmen? Simple. He pays for Twitter blue. <laughs> and that's what you call the Charlie effect. D- like yeah. discreet, direct <laughs> political commentary here on your YouTube feed. Can you handle it? No, you're not ready because it's also SpongeBob boys. Anyway, you were saying, Henry? <laughs> okay, but no, here, here's the bit where it does get like, earnestly like a little bit charlie chaplin in the um he's okay. brought in by just all of his employees in this are just like huge buff men like <laughs> the fucking the hot dog sigma vendor males? is a huge buff oh, man no. the, the sigma business males man is business? a huge buff man <laughs> yeah so he brings him in and he um he, he says like okay you, you you're coming in here and it's this room that is just full of conveyor belts that just documents are going up and down and like what? dead-eyed business fish are just standing there just with a rubber stamp just as documents go by they just stamp a red tick on them oh i see amazon have applied the policies for their factories to yeah. their offices <laughs> oh too. no clown get out of there before uh, they course. make you piss in a bottle and feed it to bezos <laughs> He drinks all the piss. <laughs> no, Bezos makes you drink it in front of him as a power trip. No, you're right. You're right. And then, like, after you've drunk your own piss, he refills the bottle and he goes, drink that. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past the writers of SpongeBob Boys. No, it, uh, not the writers of SpongeBob I mean, Boys. I mean, I mean, would put it past The idea that we write this show. I would put it past us. Yeah. The, the big businessman immediately goes, like, here's your place. Here's your stamp. Get to it. And to begin with, he the the clown is just stamping the paper again and again, and it seems like oh he's doing pretty well at this. Spongebob is watching through the window and it's like, yes, this is perfect. But then his in- inherent clownness comes through. He laughs and he stamps himself in the face, giving him a red face, and no. then starts like slamming his head on the different documents, no. causing smiley faces to be on them. He can't integrate into society, he's a clown! I don't know why, this just made me think of like, did you see that thing recently of the, um, <laughs> the robot that killed itself after 15 minutes of having to work in retail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause honestly, same. <laughs> Oh, I, I love that. I love that other one that was from a while ago that was like a police robot that someone ran up to asking for help and it told them to go away and then wheeled away singing a little song. <laughs> I did retail for a while and as a bit, as a goof, I didn't kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, same, yeah. but I'm not killing myself, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> It's a meta commentary on how shit my life is. Get get it? I'm miserable and I hate this job, but yet I remain. Get it? What a fucking funny bitch. We have to imagine that Gus is happy. The myth of Gussifus. 
<laughs> well, don't say Gussie. Yeah. <laughs> no. He put his whole Gussie into that retail world. People needed <gasps> shoes, okay? <laughs> they fucking needed shoes. And I was going to sell them. Gus, you worked with feet for free? <laughs> for now free? Listen, listen, a lot of those feet were old. <laughs> That would be a bonus for me. Wait, that would have made them coward. perfect for whoever wrote the last episode of Spongebob. <laughs> there's a certain there's a certain aura and odor that old feet give off that make me too turned on to continue my shift. So like really, what was I to do? <laughs> so far. I need I so need to finish. Far. You need to finish? Maybe our sponsors at Loop Lagoon can help you finish. Yeah. <laughs> With promo code Gussie. Yeah. You two can have <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> I went seagull I went full seagull Anyway so he he then like stamps his butt and starts like sitting on the different papers no. In like a bouncy fashion, oh, causing like a like a butt shape to be on the papers, no. and, uh, and he keeps stamping in different wild ways. God. And on one of the stamps, he accidentally stamped s- "circle" with a line through it, like "stop" or like "forbidden." One. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he did that to one of the other guys once, and the guy picked up the paper that had that symbol on it, and then two other burly men just carry this guy away while he's like, no, no! What? Okay, that's actually kind And of he's funny. just gone. Why is the conflict between, like, you know, the conventions of business society and this, like, wayward clown? Like, it seems like SpongeBob and Patrick don't even factor in to the, like, inner workings of this episode. This is, like, a short film that begins yeah. as a SpongeBob episode this this feels like a soft pilot for a show about this clown this is look at my cool new oc little yeah. clown. <laughs> so after this man has been dragged <laughs> away do not to steal. undergo Widow the clown. procedure at this office the little clown ends up on the conveyor belt and it leads him down to the big angry man who looks at the papers and says who hired this clown someone <sighs> goes uh you did sir and the dude Gets so angry, his head explodes into a mushroom cloud, and the mushroom cloud has a face that says, FIRED! FIRED! (laughs) Yeah! FIRED! (laughs) Can the hat Patreon forthcoming, dollar a month, sub. We're gonna do it now. Get in there! He's fired from here, and... SpongeBob goes. There's lots of commentary in this episode. SpongeBob goes. Okay, this gives you. Uh, this this means there's only like one more job in Bikini Bottom. And uh, I I sent Gus and Charlie an image earlier that will certainly make sense. He takes him to the local bakery. Does this That's mean that Eugene Krabs is that little of a job creator that he doesn't have space for a clown? Yeah, he even in a previous episode said, not you, you can stay, to a clown. So he's clearly a clown sympathizer. That <laughs> That's a hell of an accusation to make against Mr. Krabs. Yeah. <laughs> If there are ten people at a table and one of them is a clown, that's ten clowns. <laughs> that's a clown table. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god. Don't be a clown. <laughs> the idea too that like SpongeBob wouldn't take this clown to the Krusty Krab when he took Patrick to the Krusty Krab once to get a job is like SpongeBob just admit that you've like you're in sunk cost fallacy mode and you don't want to work with this clown but you want to get rid of him in a plausible way. <laughs> Yeah, you, you you just don't want the clown's destitution and death on your conscience. Yeah, how would he be able to live with himself? He takes him in. The baker is another huge henchman dressed as a baker who is French. Why is, yeah, so why is everyone a big giga chad in this? The big barra man of Bikini Bottom. So anyway, <laughs> barra that's bottom. a calendar I buy every year. <laughs> All the hottest, the hottest beefcakes from Bikini Bottom. All the, all the hottest beefcakes, like Larry the Lobster <laughs> no, 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 and no, no, Gold no. Team the, Rules. The hottest, the hottest fish cakes. The yeah. fish cakes! <laughs> it's all for charity. Anyway, so he, he brings him in and hench baker fish 
So it's like your job will be to move the boxes of pies. <laughs> and that was half. That was. Is Arnold. he doing an Arnold? He's but doing no, no, Arnold. That's just me. I, I, I'm simply not a voice actor. Okay. <laughs> anyway, oh, okay. Swindrup was watching from outside, and he's like, "Go on." You can do it. You can do it. He like can't. It's, it's obvious. Wait, he can't. no, actually, no, no, no. SpongeBob isn't watching from outside. SpongeBob takes his eyes out and is like, "Go check on him." <laughs> and they walk in on the eyelashes to spy on the little clown. Why well, hate that? So SpongeBob what? without eyes is sitting outside oh, as his God. eyes watch. But the thing is, the clown. He's trying. He's in his little chef costume, but he cannot deny his true nature. And he's just been handed a box of pies. No, don't! Oh, don't throw cool. them, clown! No, you'll never be able to be part of society if you throw those pies. Don't do it, no! He takes out a pie. But he's a clown. And he's walking up he doesn't belong to the in baker. Society. SpongeBob starts to panic, runs in. He has to try and navigate his body without his eyes to get in. So he fumbles in the door and does it. And... Just as the clown is about to throw the pie, Spongebob, like the bodyguard style, leaps in and takes the bullet so it doesn't hit the baker. Uh, wait, no, I fucking missed a job he had in the middle. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the did end he, of this did, Wait, first. did he work for the butcher first and now he works for the baker and then at the end of the episode he works candlestick for the candlestick maker? maker? Yeah. No, no. He, oh, no. he worked for the Bikini Bottom Fire Service before, which, as you alluded to earlier, Charlie, should be a pretty good do-nothing job. <laughs> um, yeah, but, yeah, this should be next to obsolete. But Mrs. Puff's boating school was burning down, and she's standing in the window of the lighthouse that's, like, there at the school, and she's like, help me, <laughs> help me! And the clown, just as a fireman, puts up a ladder, runs up, he's got, like, a bucket with him, and he throws it, and it's a bunch of confetti that hits Mrs. Puff in the face. And she is then engulfed in flames. What? And, and, and for like two seconds, it's like, oh, she's oh, fucking dead. God. That's the thing. That, that's the thing. The clown was one of those men who just needs to light things on fire. It's the only yeah. way that he can satisfy oh his Oh my urges. God, we've come full circle. There was a bucket full of confetti and he gasoline. He was arson around. He was arson around. It's true. But, but here's the thing. Weirdly, the building goes up in smoke, and Mrs. Puff is there, but just covered in soot, in like the skeleton of the building. And she fires the little clown. And it's like, I think this shows a fundamental misunderstanding for how the fire services work. Yeah, yeah, I don't think, I don't think that like a citizen can fire you from the fire service. Maybe the logic is like, look, my taxpayer money pays for you. That makes me your boss. Ergo, I am your, your boss. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> I doth protest citizens arrest. It's over. Oh my god, the day we get citizens firings, it's over. <laughs> it's no, it's, it's over. done. That, it's, that would it's give the Karen an ultimate power. Power that frankly she does not <laughs> deserve. Don't do it. So uh, back back to the bakery. Special may have dodged that pie, but now he's just throwing fucking pies everywhere. They're hitting the walls. They're hitting what so one pie hits a person in the face and it like irreparably burns his face. <laughs> he's like covered in like no! boils and welts. No! That's like an actual, like, comic book Joker yeah. pie. And then another person is hit with a pie that is... A kid is hit with a pie that's like, oh, lemon pie, and their face, like, scrunches up. Then someone is hit in the face with a pie and goes, hmm, honey. And then a bunch of jellyfish sting him so hard you see his skeleton, which is annoying because it's like, mate, it should have been jellyfish jelly. Then the final one hits SpongeBob <laughs> in the face... And it was a pie that had his eyes in it. So his eyes are back in his head and SpongeBob just goes, I pie. Oh, no. Cool. Great. Like, like So uh, so yeah. then at the end, the chef guy who is like convulsing yells, Fired! Then grabs them, slams them against the table, rolls Jesus. them with a rolling pin, sticks them in a pie tin, which is the picture I sent you, then puts the <laughs> pie tin in a box no. and mails it away. Fucking, um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so the final scene, Spongebob simply realises that the clown cannot integrate. Again, it's the same ending as the seahorse one. Um, and he's <laughs> Get like, out of here, I, I you need... stupid animal. He's like, I need to take this clown back to the slapstick fields. So he's the clown and he finds this place through some trees that is just like, 
when you picture what a clown world looks like, it's that. Just all the colours and like balloons and no, stuff like Twitter. that. And mm. all yeah, it's Twitter. Yeah, I made the same joke twice. Get over it. You just see live action Elon Musk like, Hi, I paid to be in SpongeBob, I'll take him in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Will you like me now? I'm in a popular thing. That's the same thing as doing something with my life. It's the same thing as being popular, right? Yes. Uh, working from home. Working from home will ruin the industry. <laughs> Vote for Ron DeSantis. <laughs> Fuck you, Elon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he releases the little clown back into the slapstick fields, and another clown comes and sniffs his ass so deeply that his rubber nose gets stuck no. between the little clown's butt cheeks. Ew, and he ew, has to pull ew, it out. ew, ew. That's a joke, no, right? No, it isn't. It isn't. That happens. That happens. I don't like, like it. No, you're I don't fucking, like it at all. Clowning. I'm not clowning. I'm not clowning around. This is so weird because it's like, oh, this is how they deserve to be. This is how they naturally are. They can't. They can't incorporate into society to live in degeneracy they belong in the slapstick fields if there is a final story beat after that i've forgotten it i think that's just where it ends <laughs> yeah yeah your your memory of the rest of the episode went into that clown's ass just like the clown knows so that it might have gone in a red nose but it's coming out God, of brown nose. No! jesus Christ, that I was can't don't live in this world the clown. anymore. <laughs> I'm what fed did up everyone with this think world? of it? How did everyone enjoy <laughs> Don't Feed this. the Clowns? Everyone betray me. I'm fed up with this world. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your stupid I comments in your pocket. Never think about that <laughs> ever again. <laughs> that was SpongeBob Boy. And I don't even understand what SpongeBob is anymore. Is it a show? Is it an experience? Is it a life? Are we alive? Is this world is worth it a state living of mind? in? I know it is because no. you'll be here. You'll all be here next time when we <laughs> see you in the near future.